Yes, you lovely people. If you're not already, make sure you give us a follow over on Spotify. Even now, like you get emotional just thinking about how how could he even yeah how could do they that. do that <laughs> yeah how could they bring him back. <laughs> Yes, everybody, I'm Ben Foster. This is the Fozcast. Tom, how are you, my friend? Yeah, very good, mate. Very good. Very pleased in the new office. You uh, liking it? I love the new office today. Um, nice and airy. The, the, the audio is still not on point, but we're getting there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's We've got a little bit of work, but it's, it's, it's yeah, good. Nice it's and spacey anyway. Right, today, guys, we've got a banger for you. It's as simple as that. It's a banger. It's a goalie pod. Everybody loves the goalie pods because everybody knows that goalies, we're the best, we're the calmest, the chillest, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. But let me just give you a few facts and figures about who we've got as a guest today. Over 450 appearances for Leicester, 80 for his country, Denmark, and is widely regarded as one of the most consistent Premier League goalkeepers over the last 10 years, Kasper Schmeichel. Wow. Thank you for Welcome. that. Um, <laughs> wow. I don't even know what to say. That was, very, nice impressive. That, that was a it? very impressive uh, start from you. I'll give you Thank that. you very yeah. much. Right then, Casper, before we, before we actually get into the pod, okay, um, a lot of people think goalkeepers, we're, we're bonkers, we're crazy. We, you have to be mad to be a goalie, right? Please, can you try and dispel this myth, yeah? And describe exactly what it does take to be a Premier League goalkeeper at the top of your game for over 10 years? Um, I would say you'd have to be mad to accept that level of responsibility. Yeah, love That's that. for sure. Um, because, yeah, yeah. when you think about it, the physics of it, sticking your face in front of balls can be... Happily as well. Happily, loving it as yeah. well, loving every minute of it as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that does take a special type of person, but I'd say... The, the one thing the goalkeepers have to be is responsible uh -huh. because you are the last man. If you make a mistake, there's no one there to save you. So the level of responsibility, yeah, you've got to be insane to, to love having that, I think. Yeah, that's perfect answer. You agree with that, Tomasi? Well, from a, from a, a non goalkeeping <laughs> perspective, yeah. It's true though, but that but people, like footballers in general, they don't like that kind of level of responsibility, do they? they it's almost like, I always say, right, I see some of our lads, we get towards Friday, Saturday, and they start to get a little bit like, oh, it's me, just me, just me, just me. But goalies, we always have to be that guy, like the glue of the dressing room, chatting to everybody, trying to help as many people as you possibly can. That's what a goalie is, isn't it? 100%. I mean, yeah, you, you've got to be the guy that, that nobody's worried about. Everyone just knows yeah. it, uh, he'll he'll be fine. Him, it, yeah. you know. Even if he makes a mistake, you know he'll be fine. Yeah. You, you, that for me is the role of the goalie is to is to provide stability. Yeah. It's not to be making showy saves and all this kind of thing. That they they come and they happen great, but to to know that you're going to be a six seven out of ten every single game all the way through your career. That's for me is that's what the best goalkeepers are. And then you know you got to look at why there's only one of us on the pitch. Well, that's that, that's that's exactly why we are unique. Yeah. You can call it crazy if you want, but for me, it, it's unique because like I say you are accepting a, a very thankless role uh, where you are going to get very, very little praise for the things you do well. Um, and you're going to receive a huge amount of criticisms for the things you don't do well. You have to be perfect. Do you think, do you know, you said there, it's a thankless task at times, right? Do you think it's got worse over the years with like the, the rise of social media, the rise of like the in-depth analysis on telly? Do you think that people gun for goalkeepers more? No, I think, I think particularly we, we were talking earlier that, uh, b before we started filming, we were talking about the, the, I think there's a huge misconception in this country particularly about goalkeeping and what goalkeeping is now. I mean, goalkeeping uh, in this country has a very, very rich history dating back to, you know, your, your Peter Shiltons and those kind of guys. And, and it hasn't really evolved the perception of goalkeeping for me. And when you look at the, the analysis, the, the, those players were the ones playing with those type of keepers. The game's changed so much. You know, you'll hear... You'll, you'll hear... You Go know, on, say people, a name, no, say a no, name, no, say a name. I'm not going to say a name. <laughs> but you'll hear people say, oh, just clear your lines. Well, no, that's not football now. Yeah. That's just not how you're taught to play. You know, but that's an old kind of mentality. Yeah. You know, come for crosses, catch everything. And, oh, he's elected to punch that. Or he's, you know, it's, there's, there's almost... If you come out and, and punch a cross, there's almost a question mark. Even though you punch it, it goes to the halfway line. 
oh yeah, he's, he decided to like, as if it, they're almost questioning, why has he done that? He could have caught kind of that. Yeah, oh, he could have caught that. And like, whereas when I then go home and play with Denmark or I, I speak to other colleagues from different, they're just appreciated and respected in a, in a totally really? different way. Completely. Wow. Completely, you know, your job is to keep the ball out the net. End of. Yeah. And it then doesn't matter whatever, how you do it. Exactly. Doesn't matter how you do it. Oh, is he going with the wrong hand? Is he, oh, that looked a bit unconventional. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Didn't end up in the back of the net. You've done your job. Do you know what I, do you know one thing I hate that you said there about all these loads of different things that commentators will say and stuff. I always hate it where, say you're playing a big physical team, right? For example, sometimes when you're, you're getting pinned in by blokes who they weigh the same as you, they might even be stronger than you, yeah? They still expect you to come through everybody and you should have just come through and punch that. You should have yeah. just come through. Take everyone out. Take everyone out. <laughs> take everyone out. Just come and take it all. Take your own place. <laughs> How? But Running into a brick wall sometimes, the, isn't the it? The difference is that, on a, on a, for example, on a corner, you can have four players running across, taking a chance that the ball's going to come into an area and they might connect with the ball, they might not. But they've run, made that run, they've made that run, made that run. You can't take a chance the ball's going to come to. You have to wait, see where the ball's going to go, assess what's around yeah. you, make a decision, and in then a have, split. In and a you've split. got what N under a second yeah, to a fraction of a second to decide, yeah. make the movement, and execute. That's you know that's a really difficult skill. And for someone just to pass off a comment, oh, what's he doing? That you know that that's years and years of work and preparation to, in in trying to execute these things, and. Like I say, I just don't think it's appreciated the role of the goalkeeper anymore in this country in, in, in the same way as, as you feel it in, in, in other places because it, it is a, an outdated view. You know, my father was one, he came and took everything. With the greatest respect, the game was different then. Yeah. You know, balls were coming in different and, and it was just a different way of, of playing. It was, of course. You, know, yeah. you could come and smash someone, but you can't come and smash people anymore. You can't, it's, it's a you, penalty. It's a penalty now. Simple. And players are clever. If they just get their body in and, and yeah. just nudge you, it's, it's really, really difficult because what we're doing is precision. We have, if we're catching, it has to be precision to the millimeter. Yeah. Whereas if you just get a flick on a, a, on a header or something, that's fine. Or if you get a full header, that's fine as well. Whereas we actually have to come with precision, soft hands within bodies. That's, that's an incredibly this difficult is a skill. Bit, this is where the goalie bit of it is like so detailed, right? So you say there, you've got to come. Say you're coming out for a cross, for example. You're coming out above people. Somebody gives you a nudge, right? And you're timing it. And you're thinking, right, my hands are going to be clean now. I'm going to get it. Somebody gives you a nudge or just slightly hits your elbow, anything like that, right? You, you will drop it. You will fumble 100%. it. You will make it. And this is where the commentators straight away will jump in and go, well, he's hardly been touched. So here's a question for you then. Is, I don't think we've, I've ever, ever asked you this. It'd be interesting to hear what, you both, uh, what your take is on it. Is goalkeeping a different sport within football? 100%. It, I mean, we, we wear a different kit. We train, yeah. we train separately. <laughs> Yeah. You know, a lot of the time, because our job, we have to be able, nowadays, we have to be as nearly as good as outfielders with our feet, but we also have to be able to do the other part of it. But exactly what, what, what Ben was saying there is, is when you are with your arms up, you are vulnerable to any kind of nudge. And yeah. that will make the difference because catching a ball, that can make the difference. Yeah between catching and not catching, yeah, yeah. you know? So we, you're, you're talking millimeters. So the kind of resilience you're gonna have, have to have, but you're off the ground, you're off balance because your arms are in the air. And then, you, you know, common says, oh, goalies union, they'll, oh, they're so protected. Not protected, not protected at all. When a striker comes in and it's just clipped, oh, he's going at speed, yeah, you know, and he goes down, that's fine. Oh, that's a penalty. It's got to work point. both ways. Good point. It's got to work both ways. Yeah. Any contact is fine to go down. Then it's, it's got to be the same for the keeper. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, that's a really you don't hear that talked about. Of course not. And, and interestingly, well, there's no pundits that are keepers. No, well, this is so, it. So, so, so you don't you don't hear that. Of course so you don't. So to follow on point from that, so yeah, clearly goalkeeping is a different sport within the sport. So you would think now with evolution of football teams, we talked about it with David Seaman. Why aren't goalkeepers working with strikers? Is the first thing ah to help them out. Yeah, yeah. So we so, said, so listen this. to this. So this is one thing we said, right? So. They, uh, we did a podcast with Ian Wright so months ago, right? And he said, he said, you know what made me a better striker? And was like, what? Go on, go on. He was like, I used to go with David Seaman and I would yep. just talk to him yeah. about, you see that there? Like he said, I would almost, we'd do a shooting practice and I'd put it somewhere and he'd save it. And I'd go, how did you sort of know I was going to do that? Or why did you save it? What was it about the shot or my body shape or anything like that? And he said, and David Seaman, because he was an intelligent guy anyway, would literally go, what you should have done is this. Yeah. Like it's a massive, like nobody does it, do they? 
No, they don't. Um, if if anybody watched our goalkeeping training, we would probably do more finishing, more heading, uh, more <laughs> striking than any player at the football club. <laughs> it's true. I mean, the, the amount the amount of actual striker work you do is incredible. And I I've, I have said this to, to to numerous strikers: come and join in with us. Yeah. Because the sessions we'll do are designed to mimic game situations. The striking sessions you do is you get a ball, touch out your feet, shoot. No bodies around, no nothing. That's not yeah. mimicking a game. What we do is so much different. It's so detailed in, in how we work that strikers would hugely benefit fr from it. And just watching our sessions back, you know, myself, Danny Ward, Eldon, like we, we finish more, we score more goals in training than anyone else does because yeah. of the amount of stuff we do. In match relative conditions exactly. as well. Exactly. In match relative condition. Yeah. Because the for me, the, the big part about goalkeeping sessions is when you're doing, a, if you want to do a really good goalkeeper session, like you say there, it has to be relevant to matches, yeah? Very rarely does a player get through one-on-one -on -one with you and he's in the middle of the goal and he's just got the whole goal to pick from. It doesn't work like that, does it? What they do is, they have to shoot through bodies, around bodies, yeah? So goalkeepers at this point of view, they, they have to take a little, you have to have a bit of nous about, yeah? You have to, oh, right, he can only put it around that side of him. So I know for a fact I can sort of guess it a little bit. It's not, it is, it's not gambling. It's kind of, what's, what's the word? It's like just being a bit clever it's really, isn't it? And yeah. I think that's the difference between decent goalkeepers and then the top goalkeepers. That's that little oh, nous of just reading it a bit more. So with all of the, the striking, ball striking, um, how many times on a football pitch does an outfield player hit a dead ball? Corners, free kicks, right? A still ball. Should a goalkeeper be taking, like, let's look at a penalty shootout. Should a goalkeeper be the first name on the list for a penalty? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, just I mean, thinking think about it logically. Penalties, penalties are different in the sense that penalties are mental. Because we can all, every player can go and strike a ball. They can all go and, and strike a ball if there's no pressure. But once you put you, them in a pressured situation, it's just different. That's why penalties yeah. are missed because even now with the introduction of VAR and now that um, that we now can't do anything on that line and they can stop, they can do everything now. You shouldn't be able to miss a penalty. Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be able to do yeah. it. And I think statistically also, more penalties are being given with VAR plus with the fact that we can't move off our line and, Limits and they can more. stop. The, the percentage of conversion has gone up as well. So... You shouldn't really be able to miss, but once you put pressure on, it's a completely different ball game. So it's all in your mind after that, because at the end of the day, all you're doing is stepping up and striking your ball. But it's the circumstance that then makes weird decisions and it can affect you, it can affect yeah. the keeper, it can affect the striker. You know, all these things come into play. So I think it, it, if, the, if the keeper feels confident about it, yeah, why not? It doesn't matter who. As long as the ball goes in the net, you've, yeah, you know, you've yeah, done absolutely. your job. I'd say, I'd say, I honestly think it's a good idea. I really do because I think goalies are probably the most mentally resilient sportsmen on that field. Like the outfield players, don't get me wrong, you do get the odd few that are they've got it in between the head. They have you've got to have to play at that level. But goalies, I think, have just got a little bit more. You have to have a little bit, bit more steel and strength in between to remain calm under pressure. And when that moment comes, just do what you've been doing. I say it all the time, don't I? If you can replicate what you do on the training pitch, because you don't worry about it's anything in training, memory. do you? Like, you, you don't, you're not stressed. You're not worrying about anything. You're not second-guessing yourself. You just do it naturally, don't you? And if you can start doing that on a pitch, boom, you've absolutely I smashed think, it. I think a lot of people will, like, we were chatting earlier on about when, I think we're all kind of summer golfers, aren't we? But <laughs> very, we were talking about this golfers. recently with my mates, right? So you go up to the driving range on the golf course. You haven't hit a ball in seven months, a year. And you go up and you just start hitting them. Nice, don't you? Yeah. It's only then when you start saying to yourself, Natural, natural mus muscle memory, isn't it? But then when you start going, oh, well, if I just change my swing path here, and I guess it's the same with, with goalkeeper, isn't it? Yeah, you, you're you getting just in do your it. head. You're getting in, you don't need to get in your own head. You just need to sort of like, like say, autopilot. If you can start doing autopilot. 100%. So with if it's, so going back to sport within a sport, so one thing I know that bugs you, and I heard you talking about it, the whole getting beat at your near post from a, from a pundit or a commentator, why aren't we seeing them? Because Sky Sports, BT, Amazon, it's all about the analysis, the deep dive of the game. It they seems. Don't. They don't have time. So the only program that has time is like Monday Night Football where they take their time because they've got maybe a, a 30 second slot to speak. You're not going to be able to analyze goal. Yeah. Goalkeeping is so detailed. You don't have time 
in the halftime interval or after games when they're having to push different things. You don't have time to analyze but they that. do so much content. They push out so much secondary, yeah, tertiary the big content. One, the big one is that the most eyes are on that one. Yeah. So when it is in the ad breaks in between, like you, yeah. they might get four or five minutes or something. They just want to go around the talking Top line, So it's so much easier big to go, he shouldn't get beat as near post. When yeah. in fact, every single goal, and you will, you will back this up 100%, every single goal that goes in, right? From a goalkeeper's point of view, you can break it down, can't you? You can break every 100%. tiny single thing down and you can say, so this is why, for example, I honestly think you've got a massive future doing stuff like that. I swear on my life, the way you talk, so clear, so concise, like it's incredible, Casper. So please right. do anyway, yeah? Right. But you can break it down, can't you? Everything, 100%. your body shape, your position, your head position, what you're looking at, what distracted you, why you did that. You could break it down, couldn't you? I, I haven't I haven't conceded a goal yet where I didn't think I could have I could have saved it. Yeah. Every single goal that goes in, I'll automatically think what I could have done to have saved it. And there's always a way. But to say to to just say you shouldn't get beaten in, in your post is as a rule is rubbish. It's mm. absolute rubbish. Because when you get to an angle, your 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 goal gets in, so it's it's maths. It gets it, you know, when you're, you're in the middle of the goal, your goal's that big, then you move it on the angle, it becomes that big. Of course. Yeah. So if a shot is, is hit with 104 miles an hour, there, low down, you get beaten, it's your fault. 104 miles an hour that way, the other way, far post, you get beaten. Same result, not your fault. That's rubbish. Yeah. Could you save that one? Maybe you could have saved that one. You could also have saved the other one. If you move that, that angle into the middle again, and he hits the same shot, either side of you, no one's gonna say a word, which is, doesn't make sense. So you have, the thing about goalkeeping is that you have to judge every single ball on its merit. Every single ball is different. There is no two shots that are exactly the same. So every single time you have to reset and judge exactly what's happening. So to just say as a rule, you can't do that. There are certain goals, yeah, that you shouldn't get beat there. Of course there is. But there's also certain, certain goals that you shouldn't get beat over there. So what, you start over covering to your near post and then they, put it far post and no one says a word. So does it, so does it, obviously then we're looking at a time constraint from an analytical point of view, half time, full time, etc. So when you're watching TV and you hear this kind of chat, I, does it bother you? Not any, no, be, with a, like I, I honestly got to a point a few years ago where I stopped listening because it would bother me. So I stopped, I stopped watching the analysis and I stopped listening to all the other stuff, you know, and I, I preferred listening to things like this from people who actually know what it yeah. is like you know i listen to, to to both to your podcast on the, on the way to train i listen to uh, richard lee's yeah, uh, yeah, podcast. yeah, yeah. you know ones, yeah. To, to guys who've actually been in the goal yeah. yeah and know what it's like to be there and when there's if there's a goalkeeper pundit on tv you listen to them yeah but what you then have is the problem is you'll have him analyzing and explaining a goal and you'll have they'll almost be sat giggling oh yeah, it's exactly you. what they do. they do they do yeah. oh yeah you know but that's for me just a lack of respect. Yeah, right. Got you. It's true. It is, mate. It's exactly what they do. It's like a gaggle of the outfield lads going, "Oh, look, he's just sticking up for the goalkeeper." No, he's not. He's GK breaking Union. it down. Yeah, Rob Green it. does it. Rob Green yeah. is, is incredible at doing it. Honestly, Rob Green again breaks everything down, and he will tell you exactly why it happened, what the goal he was thinking at that moment in time, because he's been there and he's done it himself. But they still just sit there, lack of respect. And you need incredible. things like this. You need you need the explanations of it because. I was kind of the same with referees. I would always say, oh, they're always sticking up for each other. But the more you kind of speak to them and the more like, for example, Anthony Taylor did the, the high performance podcast and you start hearing their point, you start to develop a bigger understanding. Yeah. And he said something for, he said someone, that, uh, he said that no one, no one gives me any credit for the two advantages I played into a good, you know, no one will give a referee yeah, credit yeah. for that. But that made me think actually, yeah, that's exactly the same as goal. No one will yeah. give me credit for the things I do like the things the that things, people they just think take as a given. just happen. Yeah, yeah they just yeah, take yeah. as a given. Yeah. So so the other day, even though Andre Mariner, he probably should have sent Scott McTominay, he had in that game, he had four four times in the game where he played an advantage, where I said to him, they were good advantages. Yeah. I should try and now make a point. Where, but when you, you actually get, understand so, more about them. That's the whole thing. You just need to develop an yeah. understanding. As a, as a goalie, honestly, I guarantee you'll do the same thing because you're a clever guy. You'll watch, you'll watch referee performances in game and sometimes you'll actually go to yourself, Fair dues, ref. Well done, ref. Great decision, ref. Good decision, ref. And then there are times, obviously, like anybody else, nah, ref, you got that wrong. You should have let that go or blah, blah, blah. This yeah. was a foul. Or he was, he's, he's clearly like playing on it. He's not injured at all kind of thing. Like, yeah. But yeah, you do. You see that in refs all the time. 
all the time. Fascinating. I know. I've it's got, brilliant. I've goalie got, talks are best, honestly. Oh, goalie talks. Fascinating. Fascinating. I, 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 I can sit yeah. for hours and talk goalie. It's incredible, people. isn't it? It's, it is. It's so good. We get the talk. whiteboard up, get everything, all the yeah, all think, the drawings, everything. I think it's something we we talked about, didn't we, Fozzie? Where it's almost like whether it's based around World Cup or Euros. Um, Fozzie maybe hosting like a a GK round table oh, and exactly that. Get some stuff on the screen, stuff like that, and talk about it all like that. Brilliant, isn't it? So here's a question for you then. So. um you, I've heard you talk in the past where you said kind of you kind of stu- you studied the game and whatnot. Um, you also, I've heard you talk about the importance of a team spirit and sitting down and having a beer together. Now, in elite level sport, like absolute top top level sport these days, I think this is really undervalued the importance of team, team camaraderie. And I know you sing from the same hymn hymn sheet. How important is it? And is it not? Prominent enough in modern day sport. Ask him. What are you asking me for? Well, both, this is this is <laughs> this is for both no, of you. I mean, yeah, I, I am on record saying that. And when I say have a beer, I'm not talking going out getting yeah, wasted. Not, I'm not fifteen but, pints. But you know? What happens when when you do have a drink together is you relax mm. and you start to talk, you know. And the lads that maybe in the dressing room are a bit quiet, take them out of that dressing room environment the professional you know you've got to be certain you know when you're in the when you're in the training ground you've got to be a certain way you are you, you are this certain person it's almost a character some people take on you know they feel they have to be this this persona but you get them out of that and you have a drink with them and you get to know them and it just helps because you have no idea what the geezer's going through mm. you know he could be he could be a new dad you know first time ever th- that changes your life. Everyone who's had kids knows that just changes your life instantly. How do you deal with being a professional footballer and a new dad? It, it's, you know, with the, the sleep deprivation, all those kind of things. You could be going through a divorce. Could be, anything could be happening in his life. Could have just lost his, a parent and you're there grinding on every day to, to work yeah. hard or anything like that. If you're doing that, you're not going to get the best out of him. But if you know what's going on in the guy's life and you know the guy, you know how to get the best out of him because at the end of the day, your job as, for me, as a keeper is you're a leader and a leader is there to serve the team and get the best out of the individuals in front of you. So if I've got a back four, back five or whatever, and I know, right, I've got a youngster there, I've got to talk to him in a certain way. You know, he, you know, I could, you know, like Wes Morgan, I could talk to Wes anyway and we'd, after the game, best mates, no problem. You know, I could talk to Danny Simpson. I could shout and scream at those two together. They'd scream and shout at each other and they'd be best mates after the game. But, you know, youngsters coming through like Luke Thomas, you've know, you, you got to be a little bit careful with not piling on the pressure and take the pressure away from them and just let them play. So you've got to know who's in front of you and who you're dealing with to get the best out of them, I think. And and that's just, maybe it might be a little bit of an old school way, but f- it's it's just, do- it still works. It still I don't works. think there is a better mate, way. Mate, this I don't is, think that, there is a better honestly, way. Right? This is incredible. This is exactly what, this, this is what makes the top people, top people and top goalkeepers as well. You have to have that to you. You can't, like I say, I might have a Spanish right back whose English is limited and I have to talk to him in a certain way because I know he might not be able to deal with it the way that I might talk to the left. Oh, a bit stronger you, you know it as well. With him, brilliant mate, well done. Literally everything like that. You have to take everybody individually differently and not only on the pitch, off the pitch as well. Mm. You do, you have to off the pitch. Because if I get on well with my back four, same as you, they get on well with everything, it works. They trust you, they yeah. like you. So you could, you, I might make a mistake and they'll go, don't worry about it. And I'll do yeah. the same to them. It's massive, it's rapport, isn't it? It's people skills. It's like it's how a, you get on with people. Get, I can't get sick of saying it almost, but it's like any other job, isn't it? If yeah. you're happy and and you feel comfortable, you're gonna go out, perform better. And actually, like like you say, if you're, if you've gone through something in your life and, and couple that with the fact, if you're a young man or a young woman in a foreign country, actually having a, a beer or going out for dinner with someone and just chewing the fat and go, do you know what? Feels better to get that it's out. Shock horror footballers are human. Yeah, imagine, 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 imagine that. Imagine. imagine them having feelings. Where where do you think where do you think you get this from? Do you do uh, do you do psychology? Have you learned yes. psychology along the way? Uh, Have you? I'm a very big fan of psychology. Love I've that. studied psychology for many years. Um when uh, I kind of got older, became vice captain, I uh, I employed a leadership coach, yeah. um, a former military general from Denmark who taught me so, so much. It like And, and yeah, I, I'm kind of a little bit nerdy when it comes to those kind of things. I like to educate myself yeah. on, on these things just as I do with goalkeeping. Um, you know, I don't know 
too much about everything, but I know a lot about certain things. What works yeah. for you? Yeah, and and I think psychology is, is is such an undervalued thing. But you said it before: people skills. Just yeah. being human is is the most underrated quality. And for some reason, in football, it's just not treated as as an important quality always. But it's always it's fun when you see the teams that do well. They they have a nice time. Yeah, they have they rapport well. and they have a good time together. You know, on and off the pitch, because yeah. it all translate in translates into success, uh, success. Sorry, and that doesn't matter what walk of life I think you're in. I think if if you as a leader, as a boss, or whatever you are, if you're treating your coworkers or your you know your staff with respect and understanding, you're they're gonna run through brick walls for you. But if you're you know if they have no idea and don't care about what's going on mm. in your life you're just a number to them you're just there to further their agenda you'll go to a certain point and no further yeah so consciously you hold walls. back a bit don't you you well, don't mean to do it you don't want to do it but subconsciously like you just it is human nature isn't it, it? it is it it's is. human nature and how nice is that feeling though when you've got a manager like we, I, we both played under nigel pearson for oh, example okay what, what we both we both played for nigel pearson and i do not know a single person that has said a bad word about no. this guy isn't he incredible no. He was so important for me. Yeah, he was. He, he him along with, along with, Sven Joran Eriksson and Brendan, the you know the three most important managers, including uh, I'm going to include both Olga Harreider and Kasper Juhlman, our Denmark managers. Yeah. These guys, when you have people like this in the positions that they're in, and firstly they just treat you as an adult. Mm. You know they don't micromanage. They trust you. You know they. For for me, the worst thing you can do is not trust me and and treat me like a child. That's the worst thing you can do, you know. Because if you treat me like a child, I'll behave like a child. Yeah. You know, I'll be childish. <laughs> Whereas if you treat me with respect as an adult, I will rise to that. And Nigel was, you know, Nigel was great with that. He, the way he transformed Leicester was incredible, and we are still reaping all the rewards. Still now, do you think? Yeah, hundred percent. Because. The infrastructure he put in place, a lot of the people that work behind the scenes at Leicester are the same people that Nigel brought really? in. You know, and, and he has a huge, I mean, yeah, it's, I think it's really underrated how, uh, how much he is a part of what Leicester is today. Yeah. You know, and, and I saw him yesterday at the, uh, the statue unveiling of, of, of our late owner. And it was great to see him. And it was just, it was great to see how it was kind of like family, seeing old family. Yeah, you haven't seen for a while, and you see all the players over there saying hello, and yeah, yeah, you know yeah. he's got a, he's. But he was the one. He had such an individual rapport with every player, because you know in a team you need different characters. You need your hard men. You need the ones who are, you know, just grafters. But you also need the flares and mavericks. Yeah, you know, yeah, he he had he had uh, Marcin Vasilevsky and and Wes Morgan, like Robert Huth, hard guys, and yeah. then. But he also had to deal, you know, find ways of dealing with someone like Riyad Mahrez yeah. and, and Anthony Knockart and, and those kind of guys. You know, so you, you, you don't treat these guys the same. Yeah. And it's again what you just said there, though. You've got to treat people differently. Exactly. I've never, never understood the ones that treat everyone the same. Yeah. The, the ones that have success are the ones that treat people differently. Because as a 35 year old, I'm not going to be able to train as the, the 21 year old keeper. Yeah, of course. You know, and I might need an extra day off sometimes here and there because I have three kids, I have family, yeah. you know, and, and when a manager understands that and respects that, you'll do anything for them. Of course, yeah. Do absolutely, if, 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 he, if you go up to him and say, Gaffer, listen, I, I've got, my, 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 my kid's got something at school that I really want to go, go to and, you know, there's ages till the next game. And he goes, no, no, you need to be in training. You're gonna like, oh, no. uh, yeah, you'll you'll do it, but it won't. but if he goes, of course, not a problem, not yeah. a problem. You do that because they trust you yeah. that you'll look after yourself. You're not gonna go and you know go to the pub and sit there and drink for all day long. You know, Big, nice they trust you. Well, I got right when he uh, when he came to when he came to Watford, right? He the the very first time he had a meeting with us, right? He got everybody in the canteen, like yeah. we're talking staff, like everyone, kitchen people, chef, all the office people, all the office staff, everybody together, right? And he and he stood there and spoke, right, and. He had us all. Yeah. <laughs> he had us all in the palm of his hand, just going, "Yep." yep. And what, what kind Strongly. of? And what was he saying, Ben? Uh, he, he was basically, he was just like, "We're all in this together, everybody." So, like, don't matter who you are, you treat everybody with respect. You yep. talk to people properly. You come in here, we socialize, we get on with each other. But 
with it, it was a right, but you do it properly. Yeah, you do it properly. I'm not going to let anybody off the hook. If you do it properly, we're all cool. We're all get on, have a lovely time. We will. Yeah, but if you're one of those people who will take the mick and you'll slack off here and there, I'll tell you about it. And straight away, everybody just went, Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. We all know where you stand then, don't you? From yeah. day one. Well, Brilliant. I think all you want as a player, all you want is clarity and honesty. In any situation, if, if, if I'm not good enough, tell me. Yep. Don't beat around the bush and don't give it, you know, oh, don't just keep going, blah, blah. Tell me exactly what I'm not doing well or I'm not doing right and I'll do it. You know, for me, I've always just wanted honesty. The worst thing is the ones who, who just, you know, to your face are nice and uh, just string you along kind of thing. But you know, don't you? You're clever enough to you know. know. You know, deep you down know. you know. And that's even of worse. you know. And, but I can respect that. Yeah. If, if, if a manager doesn't think I'm good enough, and he says it to me, I can respect that. But then I also have something to work with. Yeah. And I have a point to prove. Then it's on me. Yeah. Then it's on me. If I if I toss it off, then that's on me. Of course. But I won't because you've given me something to work with. And if we, as long as we have that kind of relationship, Boom. yeah, you're flying. Can we um can we talk about like your early career, right? Yeah. Because I've got like your playing stats for the games you played for which clubs and stuff like that, right? And I didn't understand how many loans you had. Yeah. My gosh. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna talk for this, right? So from Man City, you went out on loan to Darlington, yep. played four. Berry played twenty nine. Falkirk played fifteen. Cardiff played fourteen. Coventry played nine. And then you signed for Leeds and sorry, Notts County and Leeds before moving on to Leicester. Yes. How important for you at this very young age? So you're still young at this point, aren't yes. you? All these loans are coming when still you're still young, mate. When you're first, yeah, of course, you are. <laughs> of course you are. When you're first starting out in your football career, right? How important for you was getting out on loan and playing first team football? It was everything. It was everything. We talked at the start of the podcast about responsibility. All of a sudden, you're responsible. This is League Two, yeah, darling. You're responsible for the win bonus that can pay people's mortgages. Mm. You're responsible to the fans. You're responsible to the manager who could get sacked if you lose. You're in, you know, you're in it now. Yeah. You're part of that. Whereas when, if you play back then, it was reserve team football. You win, you lose. It doesn't really make yeah. a difference. Whereas here, it's the difference whether people have a job or not. It's the difference whether people pay their mortgages or not. Going to, uh, to, to obviously to, to Darlington is it it an emergency loan. Getting thrown in, I came Friday evening, played Saturday. Wow. You know, n didn't know a single player, yeah. didn't know anything, didn't know anyone. You know, no prep, no team meeting, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. nothing. Just straight in, which was a great way of learning. I remember we were playing Peterborough and um, after about a minute, they get a free kick out wide on the left. And uh, Big Ben Futch is coming into the box, ready for this to be whipped in. And he's obviously seen, right, young 17 year old kid, just stick it on him and, Oh, let's let's see what let's see what he, he's made of. So he's he's put it in, and it it, it was in a nice position for me just to come double handed punch. Yeah. Next thing I knew, I was rolling about in the net though, <laughs> and it was kind of a welcome welcome to the yeah, league, yeah, you know, welcome to professional man, to man's football, you know, welcome to this. And it was it was class. I loved it, loved every minute. Obviously, only four four games because of uh, because of the way the emergency loan yeah, system yeah. was, but then went to Bury. Uh, which was local to me, which meant I could train at Man City uh, at the start of the week and then train the next Later on when it got yeah. nearer to the game, yeah. Yeah, and then play the games. But they were in a relegation battle. So you said 29 games. 29 games, yeah. The, yeah. First, the, first, uh, the first 14, I think, were, were the, f the end of the season. And then I went and started oh, the, the rest next of season. The start yeah. of next season, yeah. yeah. So, but we're in a relegation battle. And obviously, Barry gone out of existence now. Yeah. But uh, that, that was the difference between going out of exactly. existence and staying in existence, yeah. you know? So... Being trusted with that responsibility, big deal. that's a big deal because yeah. you're going out on the pitch and there's fans in the stadium paying their money to watch the game. The lads aren't on big money yeah. at all. You know, you, you see the glamour of the, the Premier League and, uh, and all this, but it's not like that. Down yeah, there. You, not, know, you know, it's not like that. Did there. you, when you went on loan, so like your first couple of loans, did you know this going into them or is this something I, you realise very up, quickly? Play, I grew up with football. Yeah. You know, I grew up with football so I knew exactly what it was and I would I would make a point of, you know, the, the gen my dad's generation, the big time Charlie kind of thing was a you know, big thing. Yeah. Not being big time. And- you, Was that one of your dad's big thing, was it? Yeah. Not being big time? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Like 
you're, you know, you've done nothing. There's not many the big game. time goalkeepers, is there? To be fair, there's not many. You don't come across many goalies that you think. Oh, no, you're I, just, a I don't think you. it really lends itself to to the position. It doesn't, does it? Because it, as a goalkeeper, I feel it's it's typically it cha- it's changing a bit, and there are certain exem- exemptions. But it is the older guy and and the guy that's mature and responsible that, that gets the gig. Yeah, you know. So for me, it was important to come in there and and really show I'm in this just as much as you guys. Uh-huh. You know, because it's easy to come in as, you know, having not trained the full week, training at a lovely training ground at Man City and then training on Goshen Park with dog shit everywhere. So, okay, I don't <laughs> no, yeah, swear. Good. good, good. I hate not being able to swear. <laughs> um, no, uh, and and then just going, ah, oh, I don't fancy this. And, mm, it's not really for me, yeah, this. Yeah. And then, because I know if, if, if they stay up or go down, I'm still going back to Man City. Yeah, yeah, that weren't my mentality. Yeah. You know, I had to earn the right to play football because... Not only was I young and new into the football, everyone would automatically assume that the only reason I was in football was because of my father. Yeah. So I had to fucking show. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, swearing again. But I had to show that I'm here yeah. and I'm fighting. This means, the, this means the world to me. And for me to be able to help them stay up meant the world to me. That's like winning a title, uh-huh. being able to do that. Because then you, all of a sudden you're part of something. You're part of a team. And that camaraderie yeah, as well. exactly. We did this, lads. Exactly, we did this. And then obviously I went back again after, uh, back then you can only go three months at a time. Yeah. So I went back three months and then then I went back to playing resi football for a bit. And then um, I got a call uh, from a guy called John Hughes. Didn't, didn't know much about him. Uh, couldn't really understand his accent at the time. But uh, about going, oh, very Scottish, but <laughs> but brilliant. Like what a man! Uh, again, another important figure to take me to to Scotland, yeah. play in the Scottish Premier League. Um, I played uh, my first ever TV and appearance. Eighteen, 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 nineteen, yeah, probably yeah, fifteen years ago. Yeah. Wow. Eight, well, yeah. Wow. Steady. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but. My first ever game on TV live yeah. was at Ibrox. Wow. That was the first time I've ever played a game that was shown on TV and that was shown back home in Denmark as well. Yeah. So actually people had never seen me play. They'd, they'd heard rumblings, whispers about Peter Schmeichel's son was Stern. playing football. Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, he's playing yeah, in, the yeah. low, in, like, in the lower leagues. So this, was, this is gathering a bit of but, news now. Yeah, a bit so of now all nothing, of a sudden yeah. he's playing at Ibrox. Let's see how he does. I yeah. had a good game there. I played against Celtic at home. Another TV game, I saved a penalty. Nice. From um, Craig Beatty, yeah, uh, and we won one nil, which was massive. And all of a sudden, this you know starts gathering. Oh, actually, you know, he, he's he's all right. He, he, he can he, he can he can play a little bit, kind yeah. of thing, you know. And then that confidence that then gains and builds with you is incredible. And again, you've got a, a manager that's trusting you to play in the Scottish Premier League, yeah. and you're playing against big big teams, and you know, and, and that was that was massive for me. That was massive for me. And went back to Man City and he felt ready to kind of, right, okay, I've played, yeah. you know, and, and we had David James there at the time with Joe Hart and myself, um, having worked with David Seaman as well before, which was Yeah, of course you did. Now, yeah. Well, you, I mean, what a guy. I with my dad, David Seaman, wow. David James, Joe Hart, um, yeah. uh, Shea Given. Shea Given. He oh, told yeah. us an interesting you know, story, David Seaman. Didn't he? Did he? About, what was Do you it? remember working with, working with Casper? He said oh, yeah. you had quite an interesting yeah, catching catch, technique, yeah, yeah, and he was yeah. about to say, yeah. and he went, "Ah, no, your dad used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Forget yeah. it. Don't worry." Yeah, <laughs> no, but on. so I, the great thing about these loans for me was Tim Flowers was my coach, and Tim was incredible. Yeah, like, I've just named a row yeah, like, yeah. of goalkeepers there that were all incredible yeah. keepers. So I've been able to learn. I had Nicky Weaver in there as well. Of course, yeah. Like, Weaver's brilliant. I'm, I'm, I've definitely missed people out, but and I'm sorry for that. But they they were great for me. They were incredible for me. But Tim always had this, he always let, or he always made sure when I went on loan that I trained the first two days with him at City because yeah. he wanted to keep training me. He wanted to keep me in yeah, in, yeah. In, in you're still that. learning. You're still, you're still learning. You still so need I'd, to keep learning. Exactly. I'd be I'd be training Monday, Tuesday with him. We'd be doing video analysis. We'd be doing all these kind of things. And then Wednesday, I'd travel up, train Thursday, Friday, and play Saturday, yeah. and then repeat. Um, so obviously, I came back after that when uh, when Jamo was, was was Man City's first choice. Harty had been to uh, I think it was Blackpool. He'd been to, and, yeah. you know, and we were I think me and Joe were only like four or five months apart in age. Um, and 
I had been kind of promised that I was going to get my chance, you know, and, and J-Mo left and, and um, yeah, it, it, I kind of got stuck. I couldn't really go anywhere. Yeah. I couldn't really do anything because uh, I weren't playing. Joe was playing and played great. And then Weaves came in and played a bit. There was a bit of a rotation. Andreas Isakson oh, wow. came yeah, in and, him, yeah. and, and, and then a lot. So lots of things were, were difficult when you've then been out and played you just want to go and play again. Of course again. you do, yeah. You're desperate to play yeah. again. So I had to bide my time and and um Sven Jurgen came in, uh, another very important figure in in my What was he like? Yeah. Sven was amazing. And you you talk about having people in the palm of your hand. He had that in his, really? in his first meeting. Yeah. You know, he was basically like all yeah, very Scandinavian. Like so it was right up my street. Like guys, I, I'm not a guy f for rules and regulations. You're adults. You're grown men, behave yourself like grown men and we'll be all right. It's just not very, hard. No, it's not hard. It's not hard, It's not it? hard, but we'd come from, you know, very strict, yeah, yeah. like Kevin Keegan, Stuart Pierce, very, you know, oh, wanted, things, very, yeah, wanted course, certain, yeah. things done yeah. in a certain way to this guy. And, all, and and we actually started the season incredibly, like started really well. But um, Andreas was injured. Uh, so it was me and Joe uh, kind of vying for to start the Premier yeah. League. And um, so at this point, are you both training your absolute heads off? You're yes. giving it massive. Oh yeah. yeah Joe's yeah, already yeah. made his debut by this time. He okay. made his debut against Sheffield United in a game where I was on the bench. Um, so yeah, we are like, we, we're, we're training. Me and Joe, he's he's very, very good friend, top man. Yeah. And, and we, we used to bounce off each other, like really learn a lot off each other. Yeah. We used to, geek out on goalkeeping, you know, <laughs> seen, uh, seen Oliver Kahn do this or seen someone do that. Should we try it? Should we try it? Yeah, exactly. No, that's exactly what we did. Um, so a couple of days before the game, the first game, we were playing West Ham away. Uh, we were doing a warm up, and it was one of the shouts from the coach, like right, everyone get into threes or get into fours or whatever it was. So Joe's come running over and he's caught his finger on the top of my shirt. No and dislocated his finger is facing that way. So like, obviously his finger's gone and, and all that, and Andreas is out. And then I'm thinking, Shh, right. Yeah, I'm the only fit one basically. This is it now. Yeah. Joe being Joe, obviously just popped it back in and went and got it stra <laughs> strapped on train the day after. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so I didn't really know. I didn't really know what was going on. We didn't, really do team shape in the same kind of way. So we went down to, to, to London to, to the hotel and um, I spoke to my, my dad before the game and he said, do, do you know what's, uh, yeah. do you know are you playing or anything like that? I said, I haven't got no clue. inkling. Don't know. Cause like, he obviously hurt his finger, but he's trained and, yeah, and yeah. he hasn't given any kind of indication. Um, and uh, I think, I don't know if he did, but he obviously knew Eric Steele, who was the goalie coach. I don't know if he dropped him a text or something, but Steele came to my room about an hour later, just knocked on my door and said, do you know what's going on tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, no. So, well, you're so Steely's a goalie coach? Yeah, Steely was a goalie and coach. And Steely doesn't know? No, I, I don't know. He probably did, but he, no one ah, had told me. Okay, so he's gauging if you know. At yeah, this so he yeah, said, do you okay, know what's yeah, going yeah, on tomorrow? Yeah. I said, no, it's not. Well, you're playing. Oh, okay, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Buzzing, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bouncing but, around the room. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. It was, it was class. You've got to think though, this not just, this isn't just you're playing tomorrow. This, when you're at that age, right, and somebody's putting their trust into play, have you still got Joe Hart waiting in the wing? This is a- you got right, Andreas Isaksson as well to come back. So yeah, exactly. This is, this is a chance. This is like literally a springboard to the start of your career at this point, isn't it? Yeah. It, could, it could be make or break, Yeah, you know. Um, at this point, I, uh, I was in my last year on my contract going into this, into that season. And I turned down a contract. So I didn't, because I've been, because I've been trapped and they'd put their faith in Joe yeah, more yeah, than yeah. me. I was like, I don't want to sign another contract because I don't want to get trapped in, in, in not playing. <clears throat> so yeah, so I played the game. We kept the clean sheet uh, against West Ham. We won two nil, nice. amazing experience. My, my dad was actually, I don't know where, where he might've been. <sighs> don't know if he was in, he was somewhere probably far east or something like that. And he had to make it back to the game. And Did he come, did he? He, he made oh, it like decent. just in time. Yeah, My mum nice. was there as well. And, and it, yeah, it was just an incredible feeling and keeping a clean sheet on your debut, you know. Yeah, it doesn't get better, does it? It doesn't get better than that. So 
Play the next few games. Play the Manchester derby. Yeah. We won one nil. Yeah. Again, incredible. Played against Arsenal at the Emirates. Saved a penalty from Van Persie. Nice. Uh, Fabregas scored with with eight minutes ago. That was the first goal I conceded in the Premier League. Uh, played a few games, and by this time, they, you know, with clubs were talking about a new contract because obviously now I was playing Premier League. I thought, yeah. right, okay, if you're, if you're trusting me, then then why not? I'm at Man City, great club, but you know, heck yeah, yeah. So uh, so Sven called me in to, to like say, what what's going on with this contract? Why why aren't you signing? And I told him my experience of you know, what had happened and what I felt. And he said, listen, you, you are a world-class keeper already. Yeah. And that was the first time anyone had ever referred to me, to my face as really? world-class. And this was Sven Joran Eriksson. He Proper. said, I've never seen yeah. anyone as fast on his line as you. Decent. And like, oh, wow. And what are like, you at? What are you at this point? How old are you here now? I'm, uh, <clears throat> 1920-ish. Right, anyway, like, yeah. still very, very Still very, young. very young. Yeah. And, and, this guy is sitting here saying these things. I think, wow. Yeah. Okay. I love that. So that's Can I know, get this contract felt, now? Let me sign this contract. Felt on top of the world. Yeah. So I played the next few games. We played Fulham away, drew 3-3. Three, three. Um, you know, couldn't do anything about any of the goals. Uh, had a decent game. We were playing Newcastle at home and I signed contract after the Fulham game. I think I signed on the, on the, the Wednesday or the Thursday. We're yeah. playing on Saturday. So I signed the contract, four-year contract. Great, happy days. Yeah playing Premier League, buzzing, everything, class. And uh, train Friday, got to the hotel, and Sven pulled me uh, after dinner. He goes, uh, listen, I'm, uh, I'm going to play Joe tomorrow. No. And my heart just sank. Oh. But being young, I didn't come back. Like, I yeah, should have yeah. challenged it. Why? Give me a re- no, yeah. that I've You've just said these, I've signed the contract. I sh- that's what I should have done. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, okay. And then went back to my room. I just devastated. Like, Human, yeah. Didn't, yeah, just like left the planet for a few, yeah, few hours. Wow. Just don't know horrible, what. Horrible, isn't oh, it? Hor- Especially at that age as horrific. well. Horrific. It, it was horrific. I, I don't want to be a, a dick because Joe's got to play the game now. And, you know, Joe's a good friend and, and I wanted to be a good friend and a good teammate. So I, I bit my tongue and kind of left it there. Yeah. Um, Joe went on and played seven games as well. Then he went and played Andreas for seven games. Uh, and then he made a decision and he, he went with Joe. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of, that was really, really tough period, you know. And uh, after that, I went to see him. I said, listen, I need to go and play. Yeah. I've got to go and play. I can't, I, I'm, I can't not, I've, I've experienced playing. I've experienced playing in the Premier League. I need that feeling. Yeah, back. yeah, yeah. Uh, and luckily for me, Cardiff was was an option, so yeah. I went there. Uh, loved it. It yeah. was f- what a club. It was the old Ninian Park. Yeah, what I played a, there. Actually, oh, yeah. what a place. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was it was brilliant. Yeah, it yeah. was really brilliant. and back then the team was you know Trevor Sinclair, Robbie Fowler, Jimmy wow. Ford, Hasselbank, yeah. oh, yeah. wow. those boys. Obviously, I played with Robbie and with 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 Trevor at Man City. Yeah, so I knew a couple of them, yeah. and, and it was it was a great set of lads. We had a great time again. You could only go for three months. And 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 that I had to come the back. The matter you're playing. Yeah, but I, I, mean, I couldn't finish the season, so I had to go back to City again. And I was again in, in a bit of obscurity. Yeah, it kills you, doesn't it? But then Chris Coleman rang. He was at Coventry. They were in a relegation battle. Yeah. And uh, went there. Again, loved it. Again, what a guy, what a manager. Yeah. He, he was brilliant for me. Uh, best One of the best bit of managements for me was last game of the season, we played Charlton away to stay up. Yeah. Leicester were talk playing to me, Stoke. Talk to me about the pressure, yeah, of playing in a game like that. Yeah, well. How, how well, mad is that? Well, try f***ing up after two minutes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. mate. Oh. So, ball come through. I've tried to sweep up, nicked it past me and scored. Yeah. Um, ha- yeah, we, we as a team, but me and myself, played terrible game. Yeah. Terrible game. We lost 4-1. Wow. But for us... Leicester lost to Stoke, I think it was, to go down. Yeah. So we survived on yeah, a technicality. Okay. Yeah, okay. So obviously I'm lower than a snake's belly at this point. Just had an absolute stinker yeah. and we've only just survived. And and Chris Coleman's pulled me in Charlton Tongue. and going, right, come with me. You. Listen, you've got a great future. Just forget about today. We stayed up. That's all that matters. 
every other game you've played for us, you've been brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to go on to have a great career. You're going to play in the Premier League. So just take it, let today go. Just let it go. That's class. Don't let it linger. Like, that was just, again, brilliant bit of management. How good is that? In the tunnel after a game where he's but got, he's got 20 he's players. That's what I mean. He's got 20 players to think of. And he's made a point of beelining to put an arm around to know that you're going to be going through some shit at that moment in Did time. Did that instantly make you feel that, that kind of release or better? For a moment, not instantly, because I, I'm, I still have personal pride in, in my opinion, in, in yeah. how I, I appeared on the pitch, but, but definitely made me think. Right, yeah, he's right. We stayed up. That was when, when I arrived. That was what we, they were talking about. Yeah, we're yeah. in a dire predicament. So, right, okay, move on. Yeah. Next season, let's see what happens, kind of thing. Um, so again, I had to go back to City. I was still, still under contract, and uh, by this time, Mark Hughes had come in and was manager. And uh, didn't quite really know what to expect. Uh, strange situation in the sense that he was my dad's teammate, yeah, former of teammate. Course, yeah, and of course, yeah. Didn't quite know how he'd really react to what, it all and stuff. No, and but be, I, yeah. I was I was already in my mind. I wanted to leave. I yeah. wanted to leave. You know, I needed to I needed a clean break. And I ended up wasting a, a year there because I, I couldn't get out because they didn't have another one until oh. Shea came in. So yeah. Joe was playing. Uh, I had a good preseason. Um, I felt and and you know if called him on I'd have been ready uh, but at some point during the season Mark decided that they needed Shea uh, they got the opportunity and uh, Shea came in and, and obviously that relegated me to third yeah um, which made me even more desperate but again I was lucky that I had a father who could put things into perspective for me yeah. so you're still young use this time now to learn off someone like Shea uh -huh. you know I've, I've had I told you the keepers I've worked with. So I remember one training session where a couple of weeks after Shea had gone and obviously Hart had been put down to number two yeah. at that point. So he must have been angry as well. I know I know he was frustrated, but we kind of just looked at each other while Shea was doing his set. I think, he's fucking good. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like Hart, he was even like, yeah. How good? What good? Talk to me. He, About what? Like, it, what was it? He was just class. Like yeah. everything. Like, Obviously, new Shea given from watching him for yeah. Newcastle for 10 years and always thought he was a, he was a great guy. Yeah. When you see someone close up every day, how good his hands were, how really? good his positioning, how easy he made things look. And, you know, I think, wow. Mate, I love this. Right? Are, you, are you a competitive person? Yeah, yeah I know. So I've, I've, I, heard, I've heard exactly I, what you- I, what I, you I can tell that you're a competitive person, yeah. right? I can just tell it, right? So I'm exactly the same. So if yeah. I see somebody, right, and I'm training with somebody and I oh. think, oh my God, like, I want to be that. It doesn't matter what it is, yeah? yeah? It could be the smallest detail of something, yes. the way they move into line, some anything, right? I'll say it and I think, I want to do that. I want that, okay? Start so copying I, them. But Start I, mirroring I, them. I, I will. I'll copy it and I'll do it and I'll drill it and I'll make sure I become incredible about it. Yes. But this is why, this is you name the list of people that you've worked with and you've seen and you've been managed by and stuff. You must have taken a little bit of something from Ooh. absolutely everybody and always will do. Well, Obviously my dad, my dad was my dad and, and I'd, I've studied him my entire life. David Seaman, I've n never seen anybody so calm. Yeah. Incredible because my dad and David Seaman, both world-class keepers yeah, for yeah. world-class teams, yeah. two completely different styles, yeah. you know? And, and as, as a youngster, I'd obviously, I was copying my dad. So I was shouting, bawling, screaming and not really knowing what I was saying, but that was what I'd seen. That was what I was mirroring yeah. to then see the other side of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's incredible. You could do it like this as well. Yeah, but his hands, how he caught everything. <laughs> and then, you know, to go see David James, his athleticism. Yeah, his, joke, wasn't like, it? Wow, oh. this physique. You think, Jesus, this guy's not human. He yeah. can, you know, the, the things he can do and pull off. Hearty, you know, incredible. Yeah. Shea, incredible. All these guys. <laughs> Ronald Vateros, I don't know if you remember yeah, him. Yeah, I remember. He played yeah. for yeah. PSV Eindhoven yeah. and... Uh, he was the first one I ever saw do the side volley. Yeah. The sidewinder. Yeah. I remember he did that. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Show Hold me up. that. Hold up. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Show me that. Do that again. Do that again. <laughs> and he, because you know volleys, you know you're doing volleys at people. Yeah. He did that. Volley inside side volley. Sidewinder. Nah. Left and right foot. That's different. Left and right foot. I've never seen that before. 
I had never in my life seen that before and since never seen anyone that could do it that could that was that consistent left and right footed. <laughs> right, so quickly just for people at home, yeah. let me explain this, right? So when we say when you do volleys, right, you basically you stand up, yeah. yeah. So you'll have a server and you you have the ball and you just kick it straight into yeah. the goalie's hands. Yeah. It's normally just like a warm up, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's normally just like a warm up, right? And this guy's doing it side volley into people's hands, Incredible. into his face. Yeah. There. Incredible. That is ridiculous. Um, like, and the cons consistency of it was out. <laughs> it was outrageous oh, so you talk about mirroring you're talking about watching people i would get the the analyst i'd get back then it was big video cam video cam watching and just sit there watching how do how did they do that really it's foot position everything and me and hearty would be out there after training afternoons bag of balls just trying to trying to learn how to do this can, can i say I, I honestly think you've introduced you yourself yeah have introduced to the premier league the side volley Low. Yeah. I, love, I honestly I think you've one. done that yourself. Do you know I that? Love yeah. That one. That, and that. that's incredible. Learning from watching people like that, taking it into yeah. and then implementing it, practicing it first, and then implementing it into your game. And then on a Saturday afternoon, he's drilling balls low into people's feet on the halfway line. It's incredible. I, I, I love that. It, it's slightly going out of the game because of the yeah. way you build up build up now. But yeah, a few seasons still ago. A place that for was, it. There definitely is, yeah. definitely is. But particularly with Riyadh, like Riyadh and me, like that was yeah, you're Barge was over the top, but with Riyad, it was to feet. He'd yeah. come out deep and get that one low into feet and he'd do his magic. Mate, Riyad Mahrez can take the ball moving at pace and like his first touch onto it to move with it, running with it at pace is just like nothing I've ever seen before. Frightening, it's isn't it? It's incredible. What a player. Yeah. We're going to talk about some of the Leicester City players in a minute. That Leicester City yeah. team that won the league because I want to go through a few of the individuals, all yeah. right? Um, yeah, so Shea came in and uh, I went... I went to try and see uh, Mark Hughes. Say, listen, I'm third. Like, I need to go. Yeah, I need to go. And he he wouldn't entertain it at the time because we were in European competition and he needed three keepers. Yeah. So he promised me that if he got another one in, I could go. And um, that's very s serious goalkeeper, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> that is a, that's a heavy goalkeeping <laughs> set up there. Shea given Joe Hart and Casper yeah. Schmeichel. Come on. It wasn't that back in the, me and Joe weren't weren't Premier League goalkeepers. Don't matter, mate. Don't matter. You had it in you, but right? It was, the, uh, what I will say is the standard of goalkeeping was good. And then yeah. we had Stuart Taylor come in. Yeah, big and Stuart. He was yeah. Class. Yeah, yeah, lovely wow. bloke, isn't he? What a fella. Yeah, yeah. And and training was was in, like incredible. The yeah. quality was incredible. And then they got both Stewie and then they got um, Gunnar Nielsen in. So yeah. like I wasn't even traveling anymore. Uh, and and still they wouldn't let me go. And we got to the end of this to the start of the next season. And I had, I had two great offers, like two incredible offers, one in, one in Spain, one in Germany. I won't say the clubs because- Big boys are. The, decent, like, yeah. very, you know, it would have been incredible for me to yeah, go there, yeah. but they wouldn't entertain it. Uh, and I don't know how, but it ended obviously in, in not such a nice way at City. And all, all I really had left was Notts County. There was, there was nothing. We were three games into the season already, yeah. and the transfer window was closing. So it was a choice: don't like train every day, don't travel, yeah, or go and play. Yeah, and I wanted to go and play. I was desperate to go and play, and it's the best thing I ever did. Because that was a permanent move, wasn't it? That was County, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, was that Sven? Whole, that was Sven. As that well, was Sven. Yeah. It was, was director, it? Do you remember that? director of football, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 of course. Because yeah. um, the first time he rang me, I was like, Oof, I'm not sure. Lead yeah. to. You know, I, I want to be. Was that League Two? Was League Two? Yeah. Was. Mate, that's like that's yeah. a bit of a risky move, almost, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? But I was 22, 23. 20, I think it's twenty two at yeah. the time. I thought that, that it's better being in people's eye line, yeah, sure. playing yeah. than being nowhere. You like, still got to have a lot of faith in your ability, though. But I did. You've got to. Yeah, uh, you've got to, I, mate. I, I, yeah. Did you just right? I'm going and I'm backing myself. I'm going to smash it. it. Well, Boom. I think, Stepping stone. I think where my my kind of upbringing is slightly different in the in the sense that I grew up with goalkeeping, grew up with football, and I've studied it. So I felt that I'd done my homework. I I knew what it took yeah. to be a Premier League keeper, and I knew I had that in me. I always had that confidence, and I always knew I would get back there. But the road to success is not always straight. Yeah. You know, there's 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 detours, there's there's roadworks, there's all these kind of things. You know. Of course. So I thought, right, getting getting get to Notts County, they're big plans and you know, they want they were gonna get to the Premier League and all that. And and it was one of them. Said, Great if we can do that, but at least I'm being seen again. Mm. People can see me and I'm playing in a side that's that's ambitious. 
So I went there and it was, you know, it was a mad season. It, like with all the stuff that happened behind the scenes. Yeah. I, you know, I got paid, I think the first three months no, and then I didn't get paid on. for the rest of the season. Oh God. But because of the experience I'd had, I didn't really care at that point. I just wanted to play. Yeah. So I knew at some point on some way, you know, I, I'd, I'd be able to get my money, for, but, but that weren't important. Yeah. What was important was getting promoted, yeah. not staying in League Two. Being either not staying in League Two, going up with them and staying with them, or being good enough to get bought. Make a move somewhere yeah. for afterwards. So yeah. so my motivation was was was, at, was sky high. Yeah. So we, we ended up getting promoted, had an amazing season. Steve Cottrell came in and did wonders, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And again, he was he was great for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. He was absolutely brilliant for me. He was on my case, but he was good. He was really, really yeah, good. You and, need uh, that sometimes though, don't yeah. you? you and do. um and yeah, he he took us up and the way the finances were, it was it was it was carnage behind the scenes and, and every day there was it's just something new going on and I ended up making a deal with them to leave you know on a free whatever they owed me for the remainder of the contract leave that because yeah. you know I thought right I've, I think I kept 24 clean sheets in the, yeah. in the league I thought well, wow yeah, played, uh, yeah. Every, no, no, I played every no I missed the first three yeah I missed the first three so I thought you know yeah. I've, got, I've got a good chance here I'm on a free and I went away uh, and nothing <laughs> not, not a single call. Like, oh dear, what? Seriously? Absolutely nothing, no. Nothing. You just, you wouldn't like, you know, everyday fan, you just can't so imagine. Sat there looking at my phone. You know that. Uh, Is it working? Kind of yeah, thing. yeah. That, uh, that meme with uh, Pablo Escobar in the pool just, <laughs> yeah, stood just there staring. staring. <laughs> what was going on? Yeah, swinging. <laughs> and it was, it, it was literally by chance. I was with my dad um, at lunch that he bumped, he bumped into someone, uh, I think it was his accountant or someone. Who uh, just by chance? Oh, what about you? Found anywhere yet or anything like that? I was, no, nothing is. I was, I was, I was with, uh, I was with someone at Leeds the other day. They were looking for a keeper. No way. Do you want to? Do you want me to give him a ring to see if they're still in, looking for a keeper? And so yes, he did, is. and it just escalated. And I signed right. a couple of days wow. later, That's like mental. out of the blue, just a, a chance meeting. Um, My God. Yeah. So so I went to Leeds and um, didn't. Didn't quite work out the way I, I, I'd hoped. Uh, it, it was it was a difficult year, and uh, you know I, I've talked a lot about it. I, I would have loved to it to work out because it's a huge club, and yeah, it's it uh, you know it's one of those things. I always think that you know if if they had been run right back then, back then, yeah, the, the potential they had was it was a very different leads to what it is incredible. nowadays, isn't it? Mm. Very different. Obviously, leads. going back now, it's a different club. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's a completely different club, and 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 I'm glad that because. That is a that is a Premier League club. Yeah. If you've ever seen City, it, you know? big and, old and, City. And I could I could feel it straight away. That's a big club that yeah. I've joined. But it was a club that was very much run in a in a very that made it very difficult for the players. They were very we were very much uh, forced to contend with the, the, the history of the, the great history of the club. Yeah. And it kind of it wasn't it wasn't really conducive to 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 where we were at the time. So, uh, so yeah, went on on summer holiday there, um, and uh, I'd been injured two two months in in that season. I'd, I think I played forty games or summer. Been injured for two months. In those in that period, we 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 had a game up against Preston. I think we lost four, seven four or something like wow, that, and yeah. we lost two of them. We lost five and six nil, and all that. Uh, and the reason I'll, I'll circle back to this later because that was used against me. This, 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 the goals against stat was used against me, which wasn't true. But I was on holiday at home in Denmark and um, I was on my, to, on my way to my dad's house in the car and uh, one of my friends calls me and says, ah, oh, congratulations. Well, why didn't you tell me? Huh? Yeah. You what? Yeah, you signed for Leicester, haven't you? <laughs> Get out. So... I'd been asked the question by an agent, would you be interested in signing for Leicester? Because yeah. Sven was there. I was like, yeah, Sven, great, all that. But I was like, I, I keep, I've been on loan. I've, I keep changing club. I'm this guy that always changes club. Yeah, There's yeah, no consistency yeah. in it. I've got to stick around somewhere for at least two years to, to prove myself. So I thought, so I said like, nah, I keep, I keep moving. I need to, I need to settle. stick, I need to settle. I need yeah. to stick with something. So that was kind of left there. And then, yeah, congratulations. I was like, what the? So I'm calling, 
calling people at the club. No one's answering the phone. Wait, wait you're talking about, you're talking to Leeds now. You're, 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 what's yeah, happening? I'm, Have you sold I'll, me or something? Yeah, I'm trying to get hold of, of manager. I'm trying to get hold of the player liaison, goalkeeper coach, everyone. Can't get hold of anyone. So I, asked, I rang my dad, I said, Dad, what, have you heard anything? And he goes, I've just switched on Sky. It's on the little yellow ticker. But that no. you've gone? No, that they've accepted a bid for oh, me. Oh, right. right. Uh, and, but, but in Denmark, that had been reported that I'd gone. Yeah, so, okay, okay. So um, like, what is going on here? So I'm like, no, nah, listen, I, I need to put out a statement here or something. I need to say that, that hang on, I've not, because I, I was getting dogs back then. I was on Twitter. I'm not, yeah, not yeah. on that sh shit. Anymore. Yeah, poison. But yeah, it's poison. But yeah. I was getting dogs abused for being oh, disloyal and oh, all this kind of stuff. So I put out a statement and said, hang on, I haven't asked to leave. Yeah. This is the first I'm hearing about it. And I finally got all of the goalie coach and the goalie coach was like, he didn't even know. Oh, wow. So I was thinking, what is going on? So he's trying to get older people. And um, yeah, I, I got a call from the chairman at the time and, and he basically, basically told me that, yeah, either you, you, you accept going to Leicester or you or you were the under 16s next year. What? Why wow. though? Why did they do that? So I finally got hold of, or Simon Grayson rang me and um, yeah, you know, it's good. He thought it was a good deal for the club. I'd conceded too many goals that season, the goals against Tally and, that's why I then circle back to ah. So to I that. get you. So yeah. you hadn't. So basically, it it was like only three or four games. So in the three or four games yeah. that they lost six nil, seven yeah. four, blah blah. Yeah. That's where the big goals come from. Yeah. The majority of games. Don't get me wrong. There yeah. were games where we. I'm sure. More, yeah. yeah. But, but still. But that was used against me. Okay. So, okay. And then he. Uh, and then then yeah then that was it. That was it. So I rang Sven and said, right. I'm ready. They don't want me. I'm ready. Yeah, let's have I'm it. I'm ready, but and he was he was panicking a bit because I think they were they were looking at someone else at the time. Then. Oh my god! So, uh, but luckily, it all got done. Uh, I went for my medical, and 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 everything was great. And I signed for Leicester. Who were goalies at the time for Leicester? We had Conrad Logan yeah. and we had Chris Wheel. Ah, uh, Chris Flint. Yeah, hell yeah. Conrad Logan. Have you seen yeah. him? Like I saw him a few weeks ago. He's a bigger now, by the way. He's a big. He looks like I he's had a lovely seen time. Connie for a while, uh, but. But he, what a lad, what a great lad. Oh uh, Wheelie as well, you know, great lad. So, so yeah, I signed for Leicester and, and here, 11 years later, we are. Friggin out, yeah, but you mate. certainly made your point of staying, <laughs> staying more <laughs> than that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Down exactly. Nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, we talk, we, I said there about a minute ago, we're going to talk about some of these Leicester players that you played with, right? So, obviously, we're talking about the Premier League winning season, right? It's, for me still, probably the biggest sporting achievement in f English football? Uh, yeah. I'd the say, biggest sporting uh, achievement in English football? I'd, I'd it has say it's to be. There. We were talking about this yesterday, right? Me and Fozzie were talking about this yesterday because at the time, it very much felt like it, right? And 5,000 to one odds and whatnot. But then we started saying, and we're looking at the, the squad list, and you, when you look back in hindsight and you go, nah, look at that squad, man. They, they were stacked with talent. Like, look at the lads that left and where they've gone on to and- yeah. It's incredible. It's incredible. And so uh, there was a couple of our lads saying the other week, when Derby had that like, mini revival, they've had a massive um, like point deduction at the beginning of the season. And people were saying, listen, if Wayne Rooney manages to get this team safe this season, yeah. this is as big an achievement as Leicester winning the, the Premier League. And I'm thinking, nah, I'm not having it. No. I'm not having it, mate. I'm not. It's ridiculous. It's an incredible achievement. If, it's if obvious, for sure. But, but, mate. but yeah, I think winning the Premier League is, it's the pinnacle of, of, obviously English football, but I think for, I think if you ask, there's, there's probably only the World Cup and the Champions League that anyone would rather, would would, would rival yeah. winning the Premier League. Um, so yeah, winning, winning it is, is still for me the biggest source of inspiration to get up every morning. Yeah. Um, and also it makes, it, it makes not just you as a player, but I think every football fan believes that actually, yeah, everything is possible. Exactly. And why limit yourself? Yeah. Why limit yourself? But we, you know, we had a great team, but we had a team, like yeah. a proper mm. team. And we built all that momentum and all that camaraderie from the season before when we went through that tough period of not winning in 18 games and then going on that mini run Crazy at the end. Run, yeah. Ridiculous run at the end, weren't yeah, it? We, finished, were we finished 14th. Yeah. We were, with 10 games to go, we were 10 points off, off safety. <laughs> yes, you know? so, so, but anything's possible. When, you, when things like that happen, you start believing anything's possible. You've just done two back-to-back -back things. Yeah. You've escaped relegation when you're staring it dead yeah. in the face. And then you've gone the very next season, won the Premier League. Like you say, 5,000 to one as well. And what I will say is, when I signed for Leicester, the owners, uh, when I met them, 
you could see these guys weren't messing around. Yeah. And the late owner, he told, he said to me, we will, we will be in the Champions League within five years. Really? When you signed? When I signed in wow. the championship, he said, we'll be in the Champions League within five years. Wow. And you kind of like, think, yeah, well, hang on with championship. Like, yeah. But there was just something about it and he ain't messing around. Really, yeah. He's not messing around. Was he around. a top guy, him, yeah? I mean, you couldn't ask for a better boss. Really? You couldn't. I mean, if you want to run a football club, that's how you do it. Yeah. And you talk about humility, you talk about people skills, you talk about valuing everyone. That's how he did it. Yeah. That's how he did it. And that bred through the whole team. But when the guy at the top, yeah. who's a billionaire, and don't get me wrong, when you're a billionaire, nobody says no to you. Yeah. You can be a dick if you want. Yeah. <laughs> and no one's going to bat an eyelid. They'll do anything. But he chose not to. Wow. It's very easy just to get carried away with yeah, yourself course, with all yeah. that success. And when no one ever says no to you, but you weren't like that. He actually chose, I'm going to be different. I'm yeah. going to be. Set an example I'm for everyone. Set the example so that if the top man can do it, we can all do it. There's no excuse. There's is no there? excuse. Right as well. Exactly. Everyone, every neutral fan in the country wanted Leicester to win. Yeah. That year. I think, then, I think from the back, off the back of that as well, Leicester have become a lot of people's favourite second team as well. Totally. Really, like with everything that's happened mm. throughout the hit, like for the especially the last sort of like five years with Leicester, the new owner coming in, like he looks like exactly like a chip off the old block from his dad, by the way, exactly the same sort of guy. Like there's, there's times when we've played away at Leicester and they've done like three pints and three pies for the fans and stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah you yeah. don't get yeah. to turn up to football matches and get a free pint or a free pie <laughs> or something. P clubs don't do that anymore, do they? It's it's just small things like that, in, and it's all the the generosity he showed that nobody knows about. Yeah. All the, the, the stuff he donated to the hospitals, to charities around the club. But also, how many chairmen do you see actually just walking around saying hello to the, yeah. the fans? Like he'd, he'd, that, you know, any, he'd, he'd go around just yeah, saying hello to the any. fans and you he'd be handing out scarves, handing or... out shirts. You know, the other day, the owner was at the gate, uh, Top was at the game. You know, he, he went into the fan store and just that saw some kids looking at the shirts and just gave them them, you know. You don't see that. Yeah. But, it's such a it's such a small thing for them to, but it means the world yeah, to these does, yeah. these kids now have an experience for life. But also, the fans feel like they have a connection to the ownership. It's not a detached yeah, ownership. Yeah, yeah, true. And it means something that they're not they're not just. It's not a business for them. Leicester ain't a business for them. It's yeah. a passion project. Yeah. You know, and football is passion. It, that that's it awakens the passion within you, and football gives you the highest of highs and yeah. the lowest of lows. You know, and it's the full spe spectrum of humanity. Yeah. You go from, you know, pure joy to misery, to <laughs> yeah. hatred, to <laughs> anger, to, to, you know, and it just goes like that yeah. all the time. And these guys are living it with you. The yeah. owners are living it with you and they're there, they're present, they're visible. They're at away games, they're in and amongst the fans. Part they're the helping the fans, they're putting on buses. Yeah. You know, these things, that, that's proper ownership. You don't get many owners like that. You really don't. You don't. They, they're, they're virtually one in a million. You don't get them, do you? You, don't. you never see that at some of the big but boys. How many owners, owners do you have? Like in the dressing room before? The, I mean, you got to remember, Top is just a little, slightly older than me. Yeah. You know, really, is he? Your top's he's only yeah. thirty-six. You know, he's, wow. he's a year older than me. Um, but also the, the late owner in the dressing room, he's got camaraderie with the, with every single player. You know, you've, you've you know internal jokes and. I'd come in from a warm up. Sometimes he'd be sat in the dressing room and we'd have a chat, like while because I'd go in early after the warm up, sit there putting all my my boots, my strappings, everything on, just chatting, just small chatting, talk, ch anything, That's talking class. about our love of watch collecting or of uh, like we both had a love of of, of cars and we, or we had a whatever yeah. polo. They, he loved polo. We'd talk about horses or yeah. horse racing or whatever it may be, kids, our family, anything. You know, and, and just sat there chatting, you know? Love this, mate. This is incredible. Um, right, let's talk about some of these Leicester players, right? You'd say as much or as little as about these individual players, but if you look at some of the lads that you had, right, we've got to start with the, the, the quietest man I think I've ever met in my life, Ungolo Kante. Yeah. Wow. Well, what, what a guy. Yeah. What a guy. Um, just the most humble person you'll ever meet and really? just the best football you've ever seen yeah an animal isn't he sicko he's one of them we signed him and not really anyone knew about him and then peanuts as well it was like a mil couple mil or something uh, I think, it? yeah i think four or five million yeah. or something and uh 
wow <laughs> like what, what's it like then when when somebody that quiet right comes through the through the door for the first day right and you're looking at him he's small slight and you're thinking i don't know if you're gonna be out be cut out for this mate yeah um no idea what to expect yeah and then you know you're firing a sidewinder out along the floor and all of a sudden he's read you like a book or he's intercepting things and he's yeah, just yeah. running non-stop you think this was that from day one he was at it he was exactly what he is today. Really? Yeah. Brilliant. Exactly what he is today. And just the biggest smile on his face. Didn't say a lot. It's lovely, isn't just, it? Yeah, just, a, just class. Like, such a good player. Probably, I mean, I play with, I've been lucky to play with some great players, but in terms of being the best at what you do, he, he's up there. Being Nailed the, it for his position. His position. Like, I've never seen anyone that good in his position. Do you know what? I think you're so lucky that you've got to see it from, yeah. like say, walking through the door to even to what he is Because he didn't now. start the season with us. Oh, really? No, oh, no. okay, yeah, He yeah. came on like, he, he played like left wing at one point, right? Oh. They didn't quite know where to put him. But, yeah, didn't say found, no, I didn't say long. We found out and then he, he, he formed his, his, his partnership with Drinky. So it's, yeah, it, it Drinky, was class. Yeah. Um, all right, we've got... Um, that season, Jamie Vardy. To be fair, you could talk about any season for Jamie yeah. Vardy. That season in particular, breaking records as well. What What can you say about Jamie Vardy that hasn't been said? I mean, he, he's just a goal machine. Yeah, yeah. He, he just scores goals. And I think if you ask any defender across the league, who do you hate playing against? Even him. goalkeepers as well. Yeah, goalkeepers as well. Yeah. You know, he, he, yeah, to be able to do what he did you know, is incredible. Yeah. And I break that record. I know. Wow. <laughs> like, I don't really have words for it. It is just, it is just incredible. What, like his, his journey, his story. Yeah. Now, you know, he's coming up in May. He'll be at, he'll have been at Leicester for 10 years as well. Yeah. You know, so to, to have that kind of longevity coming into the game late. So late is, as well. Yeah. Is, is unbelievable. He is relentless. He is, yeah. like I always, it sounds horrible, but well, he's I'm a like, rat. I've never played against him, so you can, oh, you, mate, you can talk more about Honestly, playing against he's him. he's a rat. He, he, he plays on shoulders. He, if, you, if the defence steps up and they've got time on the ball, we're, you're struggling because they know, Leicester know well to play to his strengths. And they, that season is the biggest example of find a, some, uh, find a system that works for your team and just keep yeah. relentlessly doing it, right? Yeah. And every team they played against, whether it was Man City away, I remember, was it 4-1 or something? 3-1, battered them. Like, it didn't matter where. Every team would still think, yeah, but we're better than them, so we'll just play the way we play. Yeah. Nobody really gave them any respect. And then they would fall into the trap and they would play a ball around the top. And remember Liverpool away or at home where like- he, he, ball Oh over my the top. God. Yeah. Ran onto it, Jamie Vardy, boom. Mignolet in the goal, nowhere to be. Incredible. Like it was phenomenal, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. And yeah, you mentioned just two examples, but there's the amount of examples oh, there are. God, yeah. You know, we, we only lost three games that season, which is- Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's ridiculous. Um, I've, got, I've got some more names, but quickly, I remember we were, it was about, uh, I'd say two thirds of the way through the season, right? We had just played a game somewhere, I was at West Brom, and we were on the coach on the way home, right? And it was, it went like this. I was sat next to Jonas Olsen, big, big um, centre back, right? And he's gone, he's gone, Phew, Leicester have won again, like Leicester have won again. And I've gone, and I've gone, Mate, they're going to win the league. They're killing it. You can't stop him. You're going to win. He went. He went. Honestly, we had a full blown argument, right? Of him going, <laughs> "Don't be so stupid. Don't you dare be so stupid. What are you talking about? Man City. They're going to fold." And I went, "I'll bet you a grand. I bet you a grand right now, right?" And he went. He went. Now do it now. And I, I went to shake it, right? And he sort of like held back. And I went, "Now nah, you shit." I was like, <laughs> "Bully." Even, <laughs> even then, at that point, two thirds of the way through the season, still. Nobody in football <laughs> believed thoroughly that Leicester were going to do this. They didn't. Still, even nobody the fans, believed. Even the fans were kind of thinking, surely, yeah. surely. But like, like you say, you look back we at it the and only look ones at the players and go, yeah. We were um, the only ones who thought we could. Yeah. Re Riyad Mahrez. Oh, world class. Lovely, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I mean, Riyad, Riyad's a, 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 just a special player. Yeah. Um. I remember him coming in to the championship thinking, looking those thin legs and thinking, God, those, some of those defenders, they're going to be coming for you. <laughs> and I remember it, he danced through the defense in one. Oh, I thought, wow. Yeah. Okay. You got this a kid's here. got something. Yeah. This kid's got something. But yeah, he just, he took it to a different level. And now the player he is, I think he's better now than ever. Really? Because yeah. he's added so much discipline to his game yeah. under Guardiola. Yeah. You know, Riyad with us was the magician, you know, that set up Vards and contributed with goals himself. 
But Danny Simpson had to defend his own, on yeah, his own. Of course down there. Yeah, of course. Because did, when yeah. I got the ball, it was a side round out to Riyad. Yeah. Riyad over the top to Vaz, and, and that was kind of yeah, our, yeah, yeah, our yeah. play. But but now he's got that tactical now discipline as well, and also he he's he's learned how to shoot with his right foot as well. Yeah. So now that 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 one when he sends people. Mate. He can now cut inside and shoot on his right as well, <laughs> yeah. which he didn't quite have as as good. But now he's consistent, yeah. and that's I think that's the thing. When you are world class, if you can be world class consistently, mm. that's when you're at the top, and and that's why he is who he is. I remember playing away at Leicester that season, and um, he he was playing on the right, and he would literally just cut in, chop everybody, cut in. And he was whipping balls in, yeah. and I'm just watching. Oh, horrible, nah. horrible, <laughs> horrible. Oh, nah. balls. I want to come, but I can't come. Can I come? I don't yeah. know if I can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, in <laughs> training, in training, like you, you can't ask for better people to train against. Yeah. But in training, he was he was a scandal. Really. Like sometimes he would he could make people look like idiots. Sit them down. Chop you, them. you just make them look like amateurs. Yeah. Special, well, isn't it? Yeah, just special. Mate, and special then player. we've got some of the most unsung heroes of that team ever. Yeah. Like you say, Danny Simpson earlier. Yeah, we've got absolutely. Big Robert Hoof, Wes Gosh. Morgan, Captain, incredible, yeah. yeah? Incredible. 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 Um, Adrian Marepa says he's basically the nicest person Wes, he's ever yeah. met in the history of nice people, yeah. by the way. <laughs> uh, that's what Matt says. <laughs> that's um, an accolade. Yeah, that's an got, accolade. That, that's for me, better, better than being a good footballer. That's for me, like wins. Um, Leonardo Ojoa, remember him? Shinji Okazaki. Shinji, yeah. yeah. Shinji. <laughs> For me, for me, Mark Albrighton is the one. Yeah, Mark Albrighton. Mark Albrighton, like he's still got like Mark. If you, I, I said this on when I went on the high performance podcast. I said this: if you want to talk about elite mentality, yeah, that's elite mentality really? because you look every season, every new manager, he he goes to the back of the queue automatically because he yeah. it might always might not be the sexy name, it might not be. He always finishes, of course, yeah. always finishes playing, yeah, because he just grinds yeah. he just works and he is an example every single day of what a top professional is supposed to be that's class in that class you know, and bear in mind he got released from Villa he got released when he signed for Leicester exactly. as well yes he did he got released he? exactly incredible exactly. oh mate this, is this for any young kids out there listening please listen to every single word Casper saying because it is phenomenal whether you're a goalkeeper outfield player there's something you can take away from this alright Casper, I've got a question for you um, when you won the Premier League obviously that's you know I've had a long journey you've been playing football a long time you win the Premier League was there a little bit of that gold medal mentality gold medal syndrome where you go well I've achieved it now well personally yeah no it was more 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 wants more yeah like <laughs> wow, okay nah you if you if I felt motivated before, I'd never, when you lift that trophy, that feeling is the greatest feeling of power you've ever had. Right. You've done that. And you, that is the most addictive feeling ever to be able to win trophies. So you had a taste of it and it's like, no, that's, that's not. And it's, it it now, now what it, what it has done though, it's every loss is harder now. It's harder to take because you know the feeling of winning. Yeah, yeah. And the feeling of winning, nothing can replace that. Nothing can replace that feeling. And the, the days that are difficult, you know, when the weather's rubbish or things aren't going your way, that's where you, well, that's where I go in my head is that trophy. Mm. That trophy, that's why you're doing it, to, to have days like that, to have weeks like that. Yeah. You know, the, the weeks if, you know, after winning were, yeah, you know, I, I always say if I could go back, if I could have a period in time, there's two periods. One would be winning the league, and the other one would be the Euros. Like that, those those periods for different reasons were just the best. They were just yeah. incredible. That feeling after winning was amazing. But then what happens? And this was again where I'm lucky. I had a father that could explain this to me. There's an emptiness after. Yeah, because you got to go again. Right? Was that it? Right. Yeah. Now we've got to go again. How do you know? do that? Do you forget? You have to kind of box it off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. basically. Um, I've always been a believer in, in the phrase of burn your trophies. So when, you, when you've won, enjoy, yeah. move on. And when you retire, then you can look back and enjoy yeah, all, okay, the, all yeah, those yeah, moments. Yeah, you can yeah. enjoy all that stuff. But when you're in it and you're wanting to win, if you want success, you, you can't use that. It means nothing that you've won that yeah. now. You can't use that today other than for your own motivation. No one's gonna play you over someone else just because five years ago you won a, uh -huh. a trophy. That's not gonna happen. 
So the only thing you can use that for is the tough days, the days where you need to, you know, in the what bike, when you need to sit on that thing, yeah, you think, yeah. why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing it. That's the reason. And who did you say yeah. you learned this from? Well, my dad was-, was did, he, uh, did he win a few? He won a couple, I think. I think, couple. I'm, I think I'm four behind on the Premier, <laughs> on the Premier League count, a few more other, a few Here's one for you though. Like you, you look back and when you start kind of we talking through it logically, you won League Two, yeah, right? And then five years later, winning the Prem. Yeah. That's never been done, has it? I'm throwing that out oh. there. That's never been Somebody done. Somebody get in the comments I'm not sure. below. I'm not sure, uh, but, but I think you look through that team, the amount of examples of, of incredible stories. Yeah. Someone like Andy King, you know, King, being that bloody hell, King, yeah. yeah. Unsung hero, so, mate. Massively unsung. Yeah. King was captain of Leicester when I, I think came. he scored past me that With Richie Welland. <laughs> At Leicester, I think, but as well. Coming from the academy through League One, Championship, Premier League to the Champions yeah. League. Who does that? Nah. It's so rare. Yeah. And you go through that that team, everybody had some mad story of being rejected or yeah. being cast aside. You talked about Mark Albrighton, you know, Jamie Vardy. Yourself. Everyone, myself. Mate. Riyad playing yeah. in, I think it was Le Havre in, in League, yeah. League Two in, yeah. French, in France. In France. Yeah. Everyone had some kind of story. Houthi, Wes playing yeah. 10 years in the championship with Forrest. Everyone had some kind yeah, of story. Yeah. And when you bring that kind of, it, you, that, that, kind of, that kind of thing can, it can cripple you or it can you drive know, you. It can drive you. Yeah. And when you bring a group of lads together where it's driving you, that's powerful. Really? That's good. incredibly yeah. powerful. That's a, story, that, that's a fantastic goof yeah. 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 so This is freaking amazing, man. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, right, right well, let's talk a little bit of Denmark, all right? So um, obviously a freaking legend now, 80 games for your own country, which is absolutely top class. Um, there's, there's a couple of things we want to talk about, but talk me through the penalty save against Luka Modric, uh, World Cup 2018, with your dad in the crowd watching and somebody had their camera trained on him, by the way, it is world class, isn't it? I didn't know he was there uh, at the time, um, but yeah, that, that was playing in the World Cup for your country. That was an incredible experience. Yeah. But Jonah just, Playing for Denmark has, no matter what, no matter how much I've loved my time at Leicester or anywhere else, nothing will ever compare to playing for Denmark. Really? Nothing. There's, well, there's, just the, the buzz you get from yeah. it. The, the, pride. Yeah, the pride, yeah, the, just yeah, the love yeah. of it. I'm a, I, I was a fan. I grew up watching in that stadium. You know, there is nothing, I can't even describe the feeling of playing for Denmark. It is the yeah. best I'll play for Denmark until they don't want me anymore or I can't get on the pitch anymore. That That's... That for me, that the international breaks to play in those games are are the best thing about football. Yeah, we Absolute were we were chatting before football. before we started shooting, and like the way you were telling me about Copenhagen, the stadium, and I was thinking, I want to go there for the next match. Incredible. You know, it sounds yeah. incredible. It is. It is the. It is the best. For, like it's the best atmosphere I have ever played in. Mm. Is is Parken Stadium with Denmark? It's, yeah. it, and I'm obviously biased because. I'm Danish and 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 all that, but but that stadium is special. It's the for me. It, it's it holds thirty five thousand, but it seems ginormous. Yeah, it seems humongous. It seems almost. But again, it's a bit like England and Wembley. You know, you grow up idolizing this place, so it has a special place for yeah, me. Yeah. The pitch is woeful. It's the worst pitch. Is it? Is you wouldn't even you wouldn't even let a League Two side play on it. I can <laughs> I can guarantee you that. But it's home. It's home. Yeah, and it. I love playing there and the, the fans that, and particularly these last few years, the fans, the way, the way they've embraced us and after what happened at the Euros, the, the way the country came together. Yeah. I've never experienced anything like that. Even winning the league and gathering a city and, and capturing the imagination of people, that trumps everything. When you, as a small country, get together, four and a half, five million people, all rooting for the same thing. Yep. Denmark is a football mad country. And I've been used to growing up, people being United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea fans, all that. Going around, you're always seeing kids in, in all these shirts, Real Madrid, Barcelona. To today, everyone wearing Denmark shirts. Really? <laughs> Nothing fills me with pride more than when I go home and I'm home and I see kids wearing Denmark shirts now. That they're not wearing these top club shirts anymore. They're actually wearing our shirts. Yeah. That means the world, because I was one of those kids. Yeah, yeah. I would wear that shirt all the time and I'd love it. And to, to be able to play 
for Denmark and be a part of that group, that group of people is, yeah, it, it's the best. Is the you've had, you've had one hell of a journey, mate. Yeah, it's honestly, been, how good and then, it? like, <laughs> honestly, it's been one, one hell of a story. And, and you're looking at, obviously, um, the ownership and obviously the tragedy there, um, your footballing journey. And then we just wanted to touch on like the Euros last year with, with obviously Christian Eriksen and his cardiac arrest there. Can we just say quickly, big, massive ledge, well done, by the way, scored at the weekend against Chelsea, scored at the international break, Belton just gone well. for Denmark. Two. two, yeah, he scored two, sorry. <laughs> um, buzzing to see him back, aren't we? What a guy. Absolutely incredible. Well, firstly, I guess, tell us about that moment and that day. And then I guess, secondly, what that's done to your group following. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately I had a prior experience with, with the owner around a football pitch that that ended tragically. Um, but to have that happen the way it did was surreal. Like it, it wasn't real. It like, all I kept thinking was this can't be happening. This, yeah. this, this can't be real. But it was, it was very real. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember standing around the, in trying to shield him from whatever. I don't, we were just, we didn't know what to do. Yeah. I remember thinking of his wife and his children. I knew they were in the crowd near my wife and kids. I remember thinking if that was me. Um, and I remember, you know, what the paramedics were saying. And I remember our doctor just being, you talk about legends. Like, wow, I've never, like, you can win any league, do anything like that. To do what he did that day is the single most incredible thing I've ever witnessed. To be under that pressure. Yeah. Because that stadium is really, it's a high stadium and they could look straight down. The pressure he was under and the clarity of thought and how fast he acted and how precise he was to save Christian's life yeah. was... I, even now, like you get emotional just thinking about how how could he even yeah how could do they that. do that <laughs> yeah how could they bring him back yeah you know and I remember you know seeing seeing Christian's wife and and you know I ran over to her and you know just didn't know what to say yeah. didn't know what to say mm. you know a horrible thing that social media is and all she'd obviously read of course yeah and heard and everyone's saying you know he's gone yeah. and. And yeah, it was it was an insane, insane kind of thing to go through. And um, as a team, <laughs> you know, how do you deal with that? As a manager, our manager, how he dealt with that is like, wow. Really? It, See the it, best of people at times like that? Y yeah, because we were in a COVID bubble. So, so my wife, we played the FA Cup final. My wife gave birth the day after. And then we had to go to Denmark and go in the COVID bubble. So I wasn't there for six weeks, the first six wow. weeks of, of, of my daughter's life, you know, because we had this ridiculous UEFA bubble yeah. and their stupid rules. That's tough, that. Tough, it's- Double it's, tough, No, that. it's inhumane. Yeah. It's inhumane. So we couldn't see our families. So we had COVID officers there checking out oh, everything. So in the days following, the, the way the FA handled it and the, the way the manager handled it was incredible. Like, training. Yeah. You know, just we're, we're humans in this. You're A for obviously wanting, we've got a game and all this kind of stuff. But manager called us all together day after and just kind of like, at, you know, was opened it up how people were feeling. Nice. You know, because for me, when we got back to the hotel at night, we obviously lost the game and didn't didn't matter. But Christian was alive. Yeah. Christian was there. You're not at the hotel, but he was alive. Yeah. And that was to me, compared to what I'd experienced with Vichai, the difference. So I had, I could cling on to that. Uh -huh. Other lads hadn't had that kind of experience, you know. So it's so, still a massive shock to them. It's a huge yeah, shock, but yeah. still huge shock to me, but he mm. was alive and that was the main thing. So I was able to focus on that and that helped me a lot. And that helped me be able to maybe help others in that situation. Um, but he called us all together and he said, listen, I, know, I don't know how you're feeling. And we had a good chat about it. And he said at the end, listen, to the UEFA guys, fuck this. We're go I'm, I'm going to see my family. And you can, do, you can throw us out, do whatever you want. Guys, go see your families. Nice. 
invite him up to the hotel, do whatever. Today's a family day. Yeah. We need to, we need to be with, with the people we love. And it was a, it was a great day. It was a great day because a lot of the families came up to the hotel and we yeah. spent the day together because oh, they, they all though, experienced it as well. They were all <laughs> yeah, in the crowd. Course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were all in the crowd. And imagine that, you know, not just Christian's family, but all of our families, like our parents, our wives, our kids were there. They couldn't, they couldn't yeah. see us. They yeah. couldn't hug us. They couldn't anything. They're double helpless as well. Like you've, you've got at least a role to play. You know what I mean? You've all got a little role to play somewhere on that so, pitch. So, yeah, the manager handled it incredibly, and and yeah, it 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 bonded us as a as a group. Yeah. We had we ended up having an incredible time. Like I said, th those six weeks, as tough as they were being away from family, they were incredible, and that was all because of the people around the club. Uh, sorry, around the, the the team, the team, and the fans, because as, we weren't allowed to get close to them. Yeah, sure. But they were there. Yeah. They were at the hotel, the pictures, there were thousands of them at the hotel. We weren't, they weren't allowed in training. They were there waiting, just supporting us. Right, mm. driving remember, to do you the, remember the, all the video, the pictures yeah. though? Cause it, it was sure. massive. We were reporting the games. it all the time. So once again, Everything. Denmark became everybody's did. favorite did. neutral team. But that, like that, that, everybody that, was rooting for them. That doesn't stop at um, that tournament, does it? It's continued and seeing Christian like in the last two weeks. Yeah. Well, to be of, fair, even the Finland fans were singing yeah, in yeah, the yeah, stadium, yeah. weren't they? But they he's, were singing Christian he's like back and he's at Brentford and he's scoring for Denmark and he's back and he's back on merit and he is playing, but, isn't he? And he's it's, player, it's mate. brilliant, he's player. isn't it? It's great to yes. see. What people have to remember, he's still Christian Eriksen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's, he's been out less time than if you have a cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's mechanically, yeah. there's mechanically yeah. nothing wrong with him. Yeah. He's still the, he's still the same player, yeah. and how no one took him is how have ridiculous. Brentford managed this, mate? How have well, Brentford managed this? You know why? Because of the Danish connection, and yeah. because of the Danish doctors, they felt comfortable enough with that, oh, which is really? ridiculous that no one else felt yeah. comfortable. With that. Oh, everyone was nervous. Nothing to be nervous about. Yeah, I was saying this to everyone. He's still Christian Eriksen. Yeah. He's still one of the best players. Of course he is, mate. Yeah, but but in terms of in terms of that tournament, we we had we had a group of men that were bonded together and will be forever in an experience yeah. but we were bonded with a country yeah. that were in within the same experience and that is something that i've never experienced before and that has carried on behind the scenes outside of denmark no one will know that our goalkeeper coach lars my goalkeeper coach for all my Dan denmark career but also my friend he was my dad's com he was my dad's rival uh but I used to go on holiday with him and his, his kids. And, like my friend for basically all my adult, well, basically all my life, who uh, had been fighting cancer for three years, um, told me just after the World Cup, after we exited the World Cup, told me that he had the uh, pancreatic cancer and beat it again and again and again and again. Wow. But Lars was very ill at the Euros and uh, no one really knew how ill he was. And Lars, died a few months ago unfortunately oh, and nice. that as a team Lars was the glue you talk about the goalkeeper being yeah. the glue Lars was the glue really? that bonded that team together and Lars had a spe very special relationship with Christian because they were from the same part of the country uh -huh. um, and all these kind of human tragedies and elation and things we were going through together and that just gives something so much deeper and so much more meaningful than football and in Denmark, Lars is a legend and always will be. And the fans adored him. They loved him. And that has now carried on from the Euros. This love for the national team mm. that, that we, because we, we made mistakes before. We weren't, we weren't open enough with the fans. We weren't good enough to interact with the fans. And now we have a common yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bundle of we have a common, yeah. and now there is, there is no better thing than playing for the national team. And, yeah. it, and I'm just so proud of where, what we've been through and where we are today. And, and that's why playing for Denmark is slightly different than playing club football. Yeah, I can honestly, can mate, for, so after that Finland game, you, you guys were on the brink, weren't you? You were on the brink of going out kind of thing, basically. Well, we lost that one. Um, we lost, we missed a penalty and lost that game. And then we played Belgium yeah. four days later, three days, four days later. Uh -huh. And we started like a house. We, we went one nil up yeah. within a few minutes, played like one of the best first halves we've ever played. And then they introduced Kevin De Bruyne and he kind of did what <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne yeah. does. 
yeah. uh, and we lost two one. So we lost our first two <laughs> yeah. games, and we were going out. And then it was all on this game against Russia. Yeah. And that day, there was only twenty five thousand fans allowed because of COVID, but it felt like there was one hundred twenty five thousand. Yeah. It was outrageous. Was it a, was absolutely. That was a good day of football from on the telly. I it was incredible. That. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But after the game, the relief, but also the excitement. So again, we're in this ridiculous COVID bubble. So we were on our buses and we managed to convince the police to take us through town. Pledge. So we drove twice around <laughs> the middle of town just to see carnage. But we were desperate to go in. Yeah. We weren't yeah. allowed to leave the bus. We weren't allowed to interact with people. Yeah. It's the closest you can get. The closest we can get. Yeah. But they like they really, they, the police, well, we can't do that. Can't do that. You're ready for now. You can't do that and all that. that is but we, we managed to convince them and it was great. We went back to the hotel and we had, we were talking about having a beer. We sat down, we had a beer and, and had just an incredible night just sitting, talking. And it was, the, it was the best. And that just set the tone. And we went to, you know, we went to Amsterdam, beat, beat Wales. We went to Baku and we beat yeah. Czech Republic. You know, we had just great times, just amazing times. Yeah. And, and it's amazing because whilst we all know and, you know, we've all got perspective and, Obviously, life's way more important. You know that. You know that more than most with, with Lars and Christian and everything else. But what football is, though, it is a vehicle, though, isn't it? Because you take that, come out the other side, and then go back with the national team, and and it all feeds into the emotion and that camaraderie. Life and, lessons, mate. Life. Yeah, lessons. that's what I'm saying. F football is a is a little cataclysm of 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 the whole spectrum of of human interaction. Yeah, you know, you experience every emotion in football so literally in your case yeah literally yeah, actually quite literally and 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 that's that's why we love the game that's why i love the game because it can give you everything and it can give you nothing yeah you know no, it wrong. can make you feel everything every kind of way so so yeah that that is why football for me is unique and it, it it's something that's worldwide wow Casper, we are nearing the end of the pod and it has been, mate, isn't it? Absolute pleasure. Oh, what a guy. What a oh, guy, honestly. Um, I told you goalie pods are the best and you've <laughs> smashed it, mate. You've absolutely smashed it. Right, this is a new segment we're always going to finish on now. Every pod from now on, we're going to finish on and it is quick fire questions. Today, with Casper Schmeichel. You ready for these, all right? Ins uh, insert fancy jingle here. Yeah, get the jingle in. We'll right. get a jingle. We we you're going to come up with a jingle, Frank, yeah? It's good. We'll get a jingle. Quick fire questions with Casper Schmeichel. Do you have any hidden skills, Casper? I do, yes. Oh, here we go. Uh, I am an amateur singer. Really? And um, I'm like, yeah, I'm a chef. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go on, wow. man. Yes. You got the whole yeah. package. Yeah, love cooking. Love, your your love wife's cooking, yeah. like killing it. She's having the time <laughs> yeah. of her life. Handsome, good at football, earn some money, and you do yeah, the but cooking. But I'm never there though. That's the problem for. Ah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, but in a few years, mate. In a few yeah, years. Yeah, in a few years. There. In a few years. Yeah. Um, okay. What's your favourite meal? Uh, anything Italian. I love yeah. love Italian food. Um, some kind of pasta dish. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Some yes. kind of, anything. anything like that, yeah. I love, just love Italian food. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, your idol growing up. A uh, few. My father, obviously, one. Uh, Roger Federer nice. and Tom Brady. Yeah, decent. Some big dogs there, by the way. Um, what's the best advice you would give to your younger self? Relax. Yeah. Enjoy. Just enjoy it. Nice. Enjoy the journey. Love that. Um, is there anything that you've got on your bucket list to do? One in football and one out of football. Um, yeah, in football, obviously. <laughs> Win, win World Cup, win Champions League, yeah. anything like that is, is is a given. But you know, to to get back in, get back to playing the Champions League again, uh, and to win something with my country, win yeah. some. That's that that's got to be the top. Win something with that's Denmark. Special, yeah. Um, if you had to do, right, so you said you were a good singer, yeah. If you're gonna do karaoke, what are you singing? Anything. I'll sing anything. You got a decent voice, then, yeah. I don't know, but. He's I mean, backing himself. No, yeah, 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 I'm, 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 no I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm very average, but I, I really enjoy it. I yeah? really enjoy it. No, it's, it's good. I've had, uh, you know, I've, I've had a few opportunities to, to sing with some, some, some particular, some good singers back in Denmark, and, and uh, had a few performances with them low key. So, um, is this out in the public forum? Do people have people seen they'll, this? They'll be somewhere, but <laughs> I'm gonna have a look at this later on, mate. I'm gonna be somewhere later on. But no, um, favorite film? Yeah, you, I knew you were gonna ask that, and. and 
I'm not really a film guy that much. More series and things like that. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say series. Uh, I'd say maybe Entourage. Always love Entourage. Um, <laughs> That's our favorite. Yeah, That's our it, favorite. It, yeah. It's, it's All time favorite. It's TV amazing. The best. Um, yeah. Maybe. I've got one, the newsroom. I love the newsroom. I yeah, think, uh, okay. I haven't that, seen that. that I really mean, enjoyed that, that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's just so many good ones. Yeah, love I Game of Thrones. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. spent a lot of time watching TV, so I, I love most. But Entourage has got to be top. all time. Yeah. 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 We're with that. We're on board of that. Um, who was your first ever teenage crush? Oh, good question. Yeah. Oh, wow. Jesus. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good <laughs> question. Well, when I was a teenager, uh, it, well, when I was a teen, it was always between Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. It was those, yeah. those were the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so one of those two. Yeah, uh, or both. Yeah, both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite holiday destination. <laughs> um, I always do the same thing. I, I always spend half my holiday in Copenhagen. Yeah, always because summer in Copenhagen, I, I love. Uh, and then probably Sardinia. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Um, if you couldn't have been a professional footballer, what sport would you have loved to have done professionally? NFL. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Love that. Kicker, mate. You, you could kick after football. You could. <laughs> I swear on my life, you could. If you've ever wanted to watch somebody just munt the ball as far as they possibly can, yeah? He takes about two steps and goes, whop. It's incredible. He could be a kicker. Nah, Edison's the one. Yeah, Ed you, Edison's you're, the oh, one. Mate, you're up there. I promise you. I guarantee it. You could uh, be a kicker. Maybe, maybe one day. Maybe one day. There you go. Um, do you have any phobias? Uh, I'm not a big fan of heights. Yeah? No, I don't like heights too much. Uh yeah, yeah, heights probably. Yeah, one, I'm yeah. with you. I'm, I'm the same as that. Um, on your phone, right? What is the oldest app that you've got on there that you still play today? Which is a, like a game. I, see, I don't, I don't play games on my phone. I'm, no, I, I'm, I'm, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I've never got into gaming in any way. Uh huh. Uh, and Not I think nothing I'm too like back in the day, Mega Drives, PlayStation, anything like I, that. No, I, I had them, but I've, I never played any of it. It just. I was too. I grew where I grew up. We we had my gar our garden, and then there was this big forest at the back. And that was where I was in the forest. Oh, I was in, I was playing football, or I was trails. climbing <laughs> trees, or, or yeah, that's nice. I yeah, wish our kids would do that. I was never uh, I was never a fan of games, and I've never really done it either. Now on my phone, no. All right, sweet and up. Right, we're gonna go for some sort of like footbally questions now. Right, do you have any super superstitions? Not anymore. No, I yeah. used to, but not anymore. I I. I uh, I used to have loads and, and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank once uh, took the piss out of me while I was doing my routine and he said, well, what are you doing? And I was, I was just doing my routine. Well, what if you get it wrong? What if you even make a mistake? Can you not play? True. And I was like, kind of right. And he, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, not, kind, he's, he's kind of right. So, so I thought, yeah, no, do you know what? Stop him. Stop you're him. right, yeah, Jimmy. Stop him. No more. Yeah, damn yeah, right. Jimmy, well. you're right. Um, what's the first match you ever went to you can remember going to? Oh God! I, again, as my upbringing, I, I was lucky to go to quite a few, uh, quite a few <laughs> matches. Um, it, it would have been at Old Trafford. Yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah, I can't. I can't say the specific match. They all kind of blur yeah, yeah. into one. I can probably my, my first specific match I remember uh, for watch my dad for Denmark was against Nigeria at home. Nice. I remember that. Uh, but yeah, Man United. I, I was lucky. I was yeah. lucky enough to, to 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 be able to go to quite a few. You seen the video of him um, in the tunnel at Old Trafford with um, playing football with Thomas Ince? It's brilliant. Yeah. Honestly, it's absolutely brilliant. Even then, he's got full Man United kit on, oh, like yeah. full, like the green one. Full oh, beautiful. Kit. And like he's he's literally telling Thomas, like, no, now you do that. Now you do <laughs> it. There. Like the big red doors behind yeah, him and stuff. It's wicked. Right. I love it, mate. It's class. Um, who's the funniest player in the team? Oh wow, the funniest. Well, it depends again what humor you like. If you like dad jokes and stuff, like Johnny Evans is, is yeah. brilliant. Like you yeah. know Johnny. Dry as you yeah, like. Yeah, just as dry as you yeah. like. Sharky's funny. Yeah. Sharky's quite funny. Um I'm trying to think who else is funny in that dress. I'm happy with dad jokes, mate. I don't know what yeah, Joe, yeah, let, let's honest, stick yeah. with, with 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 let's go with Johnny. Yeah, Johnny, I'm yeah, happy with that. Johnny's um, very dry. Who's got the worst dress sense? Wow. How long you got? 
there's a few. <laughs> no, I think I think I'm just old in the in, in when it comes to some of the younger. Mate, lads you look here. a million. What are you on about? <laughs> no, Don't no, say no. anything about yours. No, no, you no. When, when it comes to some, because some of the youngsters they come from lively, lively gear. They're yeah. lively gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something I personally would never wear, but you know they probably wouldn't wear half the stuff I'd wear. I'm, I I keep trying to just keep it very simple. Hey, it's mad. Some of the, some of the stuff young lads wear nowadays is bonkers, isn't it? It's absolutely bonkers, mate. Honestly. But do you know what? I, I keep thinking, did, did the older pros say that about me when I was younger? Maybe. Don't know. But not out there. Well, I no, never thought we I was, were out yeah, there like some of these nah, kids. Nah, I, I, I don't think I was ever as 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 confident and Larry yeah. as, as some of them. Did you see Calvin Phillips? Like did you see Calvin Phillips shoes? <laughs> mate, I did see Calvin. Have you seen Calvin Phillips shoes the other day, mate? Please. Interesting. Oh my gosh. Interesting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, I was going to ask your first football kit, definitely a Man United kit. Um, if you're having a night out, which player from the Leicester team are you going out with? Well, again, I'd have to say Yannick, Yannick Vestergaard. Yeah. Because obviously our, our Danish connection, but- You were going to say Yannick, Danish friends yeah. then, weren't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard the story about this, no? No? Nah, I've explained it. I can't remember where I explained it, but- but this this is this is where the English bias in the media comes in because oh Jamie Vardy is so funny, isn't he? Because he's not. He's <laughs> not. No, no, no. In the tunnel, um, in the Southampton tunnel, you know, you know, there's the, the double doors. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's the double doors, and then you come out where the cameras are. Uh huh. So before that, Vardy is saying hello to all the English lads, and I've gone, oh, English friends. So as we come around the corner, I said hello to Pierre, and then he's done it. So they've all Danish only, friends. Yeah, they've only. But they ain't got the English no, no, friends. No, 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 no. They would we'll be able to have heard it if they were recording, but mate, it, but yeah. they, they need to get the longer bit of this yeah, clip. Then. Exactly. This it's like the, one saying. of the most famous clips I'll you'll ever see I'll as well. Anyone that's ever that's ever wanted to hear it, but no, one, no, they I, don't care, mate. No, they don't care. Just Vaz is just hilarious. Oh, mate. <laughs> yeah, I want to see that whole yeah, clip now. Yeah. We'll dig it out somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah, um, did. And most competitive player in training. Me. Is it? Oh, without question. Really? Yeah. Five aside, six aside, have to win. Anything. Yeah, anything. I love it. Anything. Mate, I think we're there. That was incredible. That was brilliant. Casper, you're enjoyed the man. Enjoyed it. Casper, thanks, Michael. Michael. Thanks for what having me. Guy, mate. I right, enjoyed um, it. Like I said, we, we always finish every podcast, right? I'll start us off. We look in that camera there and we say, up the Fozcast. That one, yeah? Yes. <laughs> up the Fozcast. Up the Fozcast. Up the Fozcast. Yes, boys. <laughs> Casper, mate. Fucking brilliant you are, by the way. Who was that? Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed the latest episode of the Fozcast. Don't forget to give us a follow on Spotify. Up the Fozcasts.